Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Assalamu alaikum Mariam and Ahmed. Wa alaikum assalam. Okay, so we're going to get started today with um, a bunch of emails that you guys sent me and I'm sure Jawad also received a bunch of questions. Um, some of them I thought were important enough that we should, you know, kind of talk about them in class together because, uh, and I want to say some things about questions. So if when you email me directly, um, just make sure that you don't say, Ustad, on page 14, question number seven and eight, help me. Because I'm, I, I check your emails when I'm running, when I'm having lunch, when I'm, you know, like in the parking lot or wherever. Wh whatever I'm doing, I'm kind of going back and forth and kind of looking at it. I'm not at a desktop or a computer. I'm not opening up those files to look at that. So if you can just send me a screenshot or a picture or, uh, you know, point at what you're talking about or type it up then I can quickly answer those kinds of questions. So that's one thing that I wanted to say. Uh, another thing that I wanted to say is that, um, so some of your questions uh, are framed incorrectly. And I, you know, kind of get stuck on how to answer that. And that's actually one of the, some of the questions that I had forwarded to Jawad. So I wanted to discuss them in class. And that, what do I mean by framed incorrectly? So a student wrote to me and said, we all know, well, I was thinking about assalamu alaikum and I was thinking, well, clearly assalam is the mudaf and alaikum is the mudaf ilay, but the translation doesn't say of, but you taught us that there's an of in mudaf and mudaf ilay. It's a very coherently written question, except the part where you said assalam is a mudaf and alaikum is a mudaf ilay, as though that's a fact that's established which is a big problem because assalam is not a mudaf, it has an al on it, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So that's why it can't be a mudaf. And then ala, which is right after that, is a harf of jar. And a harf of jar does not have any properties. But a mudaf ilay is supposed to be in jar yeah. form. And then if you say, no, 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 I wasn't thinking of ala as the mudaf, mudaf ilay. I was thinking of kum as the mudaf ilay. The problem with that is a mudaf has to be right next to the so there were like 85,675 reasons why you should have known that that's not a mudaf mudafile. But what, what those questions tell me is sometimes students are um, overlooking some of the things we covered and or, or not, they didn't apply them properly. And so my recommendation for those kinds of situations is not for me to get upset and start short circuiting and saying, how can you say this? Ah. Uh, but instead say, hey, I think you need a review on what mudaf mudafile actually is, right? And a similar question like that, before I turn to the screen and, and pop it open, actually, um, can you help me uh, with the code? Jo uh, Ahmed, quickly help me with the code. Let me just pull that up so that I don't have to do that later. 8CN. NQ. Yeah, Q. Uh, TB. TB. JM. JM. WF. Okay. Hey, yeah, you got it right. Yay. Okay. So um, what was I saying? I lost my train of thought. It was uh, something about Islam or something. Oh, uh, it was about the mudaf and mudafile. Uh, yeah, it was about the mudaf and mudafile. There, there was a, a new term we learned yesterday. It's a little out of focus, isn't it, the camera? Yeah. So I'm blurry. Mm -hmm. Go do the dial thingy. Okay. First one, yeah, the closer one to me. No, the other way. Mm, good enough. Perfect. Come back. Okay, not blurry anymore. Yep, not blurry anymore. And let me add screen screen here. All right. So um, some of you ask questions about Ismul Ishara and Musharun Ilay. And I want to talk about that even before I have Jawad read the, the question. I want to pull that up and show it to you. If I can get my word open. I was still thinking about opening it. Okay. So... And ismul ishara is the words you learned on page 30, right? So that's hada, hadihi, dalika, those yeah. words, right? So those, those, that's ismul ishara. That I hope everybody's clear about. Pointing words are ismul ishara, okay? What is a musharun ilay? A musharun ilay is the word that has al on it right after. Yeah. If it's not right after and it doesn't have al on it, you can't call it musharun ilay. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. So if I have an example like uh, 
هذا قرآن وكتاب كتاب Yeah. Then this is not the kitab is not going to be called a mushar ilay yeah. because it doesn't have al, al on it. Yeah. So somebody wrote and said, "Well, you said that the mushar ilay is supposed because they they said in like they saw something like in hada or in nafi or um, in hada kitabun, right? Yeah. You said well in makes the next word nasab. Everybody knows that, right? Yeah. So hada became nasab. But it, it should watch to match with the next word. Mm -hmm. No, it's not supposed to match with the next word. It's supposed to match with the musharun ilay. Yeah. But kitabun is not musharun ilay. ilay. So it's not going to match with it. Yeah. If this was a musharun ilay, hey, malware, I can download. No. If I, if I could make this a musharun ilay, like al-kitab, yeah. then I would say inna hada al-kitaba. Now I would match mm -hmm. it, okay? Yeah, because if it's not a musharun ilay, there's no reason to match it. And you will find in the Quran when it's not a musharun ilay, you're not matching it. And what what happens when you don't match it, or when you when you don't have a musharun ilay, you put an is in between, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Now here's the important thing: how many fragments did you learn about? Five. Five. But what are they off the top of your head? Uh, one is no al. No, no, no. Mudaf. Mudaf. Mudaf and mudaf ilay. Good, Maryam. Uh, Okay, that's three. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, then the uh, it would be adjective. adjective. No. Oh, oh, oh. Suf and sifa. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and then hold on. Ismul ishara and. Uh, ismul ishara and uh, ismul. Musharun day. You you hate that word. You'll get it. Ismul ishara and. Uh, One more time. Five fragments. What are they? Mudaf and Mudaf ilay. Harf of Jar, Harf of Nasab, Mausuf and Sifa, and Mushar. Ism al Ishara. Ism al Ishara and Mushar al Ilay. One more time. Mudaf and Mudaf ilay. Harf of Jar, Harf of Nasab, Mausuf and Sifa, and then Mushar and Mushar. Ism al Ishara and then Mushar and Ilay. Yep. Yep, ismul ishara musharun What does ismul ishara musharun ilay mean? Pointing word and the al word. That's what ismul ishara pointing word. Hada hada ni ha ulai hadihi hatani. Why am I doing this alone? Hada hada ni ha ulai hadihi hatani ha ulai. Dalika dalika ulai ka tilka dalika ulai ka. You're right. It's day seven. I didn't change it. Let me fix it. I technical difficulties, so I started late, so I didn't get to change the day six to day seven. And you should be happy it's day seven, right? So yeah. I can't take your happiness away. Let's do that real quick. Also, Stad, mm -hmm. the example from the email was inna hada adu'un laka. Okay, good. Thanks. I wasn't remembering what the exact example was. Let's do that. Let me put that on the screen. It says day seven. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Inna hada aduun laka. The question is, Ustad, how come aduun is rafa? It was supposed to be nasab because hada. You said yesterday that it matches with whatever it's pointing at the musharun yeah. ilay. Yeah. The problem with that question is, this isn't a musharun ilay. Yeah, Why isn't it a musharun no, ilay? No al. That's why it's not matching. Mm -hmm. That's that's where the gap in your understanding was. Okay. Let's take another question. There's another question on the same example. Yeah. Um, sorry, I'm just reading through it. That's fine. You can even read it out loud. Let's let's everybody be. Okay. Uh, I would like to ask. Uh, if you can tell me why the word aduwan is written in rafa form, uh, it's not musharun ilay, so it doesn't have to match, um, and uh, it doesn't have to be nasab because of that. But if it's rafa, doesn't that mean it's the subject of the sentence? Okay, it that's something mean. I wanted to bring up to you guys because you're all grown up now. So far, I have told you that there are three statuses: rafa, nasab, and yeah. jar. I need like super attention on this now, you guys. 
nasab is now you know that jar is done for two reasons so yeah. far it's either a mudafilay okay. or it got beat up by a half of jar so it's the majroor mm -hmm. right it's the the jar made it majroor yeah. right those are the two reasons you find jar okay Nasab, you find it for two reasons. Either it's a detail, detail of a fi'il, fi'il or, or beat up by, uh, it's it's the ism inna, is or ism, ism whatever half of nasab. Ismu inna. Right, ismu inna, right. Those are the two reasons. There are two separate reasons. Mm -hmm. Because it's an ismu inna doesn't mean it's a detail. Yeah. That's a separate reason, that's a separate reason. So how many reasons for nasab? Two. 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 How many reasons for jar? Two. two. And then for Rafa, we I only sh so far taught you one reason. What's the one reason? Uh, the doer. Yeah, it's the doer of the fi'l. Right? That's what I taught you so far. I'm going to add a new one here. I'm going to call it default. Okay? So that's something I never said before. Rafa is also what? Default. Default. Let me tell you what that means in the philosophy of Arabic grammar. When you have no reason to make a word, nasab or jar, mm -hmm. you must leave that word alone. And leaving that word alone means you left it in rafa. Oh. In other words, when you see a word in rafa in the Quran, it's doing one of two things. Mm -hmm. It's either rafa because it has no reason to be anything else, yeah. or it's rafa because it's the doer. We'll get more specific. Actually, the grammarians, the way they talk about this is that there are eight kinds of rafa. Yeah. They say al mubtada, al khabar. They say khabar inna. They say ismukana. They say the fa'il. They say the naibul fa'il. They have these, you know, the the, the the munada. They have they have words. They have terms for each situation in which the rafa occurs. I don't care. Simpler, way simpler is default. We're we're gonna do that when we get advanced in our grammar. But for now, the question was, Inna hadha, Inna hadha aduwun laka. That's the ayah. And the student asked, well, I know that in hadha became nasab yeah. because of inna. Mm -hmm. But why is aduwun rafa? Is that, does that mean it's a doer? No, this time it doesn't mean it's a doer. It actually means it has no reason to be anything else. Yeah. There's no force acting on it to make it Nasub, and there's no force making it jar. jar, so it has only one option, which is to stay normal, yeah. which is rafa. The law of inertia is a force, you know, a, a body in motion, mm -hmm. something that's moving will keep moving unless a force stops it, yeah. right? So friction or gravity or resistance will stop a ball from rolling, mm -hmm. right? So a force had to put it to a stop. If yeah. there was no force stopping it, it would keep on rolling forever, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And a body that's sitting still in physics if this is sitting still, it will not move until a force moves it. And ism will stay rafa until a grammatical force moves it to nasab or jar. This is grammar physics. Okay? Yeah. So the physics is rafa is actually the default, the 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 starting point of uh, of the ism. And then you have to have a reason. Now, <coughs> when you say alhamdulillah, right? Mm -hmm. The word Allah is jar for what reason? Uh, because it's default. Be, no, the word Allah is jar. Jar. Oh yeah, because for, of jar has to have a reason. Yeah, because it's mudaf and mudafi. Like. No, astaghfirullah. Inna lillahi wa inna What kind of word is li, Maryam? Li. Ba ta. Ba ta kaf lam lam. It's a half of jar. Yeah, oh, a half yeah, of jar makes it. the next word. Jar. This is jar majrur. Oh yeah. That's why the word Allah is jar. Yeah. But the word, if somebody says, "Why is alhamdulillah?" I say, "Because it has no reason to be nasib, and it has no reason to be." Yeah. Jar. But the khatib sometimes, before he puts you to sleep, says, Inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduh, wa nasta'inuh, wa nasta'ghfiruh, wa nu'minuh bih. You ever heard those khutbas like that? Yeah. Man, those, those imams are like so nice before Juma. Yeah. They're like, Assalamu alaikum, how are you? Alhamdulillah, how's your family? Alhamdulillah. And then they put the mic on, they're like, Inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduh, wa nasta'inuh, wa nu'minuh. I was like, you were so nice a second ago. And then when the salah is over, they're like, Alhamdulillah, how are you? And he does. <laughs> but anyway, in Alhamda, Inna made the word hamd nasab. Now it has a reason to be. Yeah. When you give when you give the adhan, you say, Allahu Akbaru. Allahu Akbaru. The word Allah is rafa, right? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. But there's no action. It's just rafa because there's no reason to make it anything else. Yeah. And that's the same reason Akbar was rafa because there's no reason to make it anything else. 
So rafa can happen because there's no other reason. I hope that's clear. Yeah. Okay. Now, Jawad, I'll preempt a question that I'm remembering and see if there's something outstanding from it. The use of wow. This is something that I need you guys to get now. You're, it's it's time that you understood this. Wa is a harf of jab, mm -hmm. right? And it means I swear by. Open up page 27 or page 26, 27, 27. And I want you to write some things down. Okay, I want you to understand this because this is actually not just Arabic now. I'll teach you something about Quran now. Okay. And then on the blank page over here, just write wow and take some notes. Okay. So you can write wow like this, or you can just write it like that. Okay. And what does it mean? I swear by. In old English, people used to say by the sun and the moon. But what they mean is what? I swear by the sun. I swear by the moon. Okay. Now, that means that wow is used, number one, or uh, you can just write it without numbers. It is used for an oath or to swear. And what effect does it have on the next word because it's a half of jar? It makes the next word jar. It makes the next, so you say wallahi. Mm -hmm. You, pe you Allah. hear people say wallahi? Yeah. yeah. Wa, and then they make the next word Allah, jar. And they say wallahi, right? Now the reason they say that is they're saying I swear by Allah. Mm -hmm. So the wa part means I swear by, and then the whatever you added after that becomes the majroor. So wallahi, I swear by Allah. Allah. You get it? Yeah. Okay. Now, so it is used for an oath or, or to swear. Now, what, I've, what, what we're going to do now is, is why do... People take oaths And I didn't say why do people swear Because you might think swear here means use bad words mm -hmm. I don't mean use bad words yeah. I mean why do they take an oath Why do they say I swear by this or I swear by that Right mm -hmm. So let's write down some reasons Why do people swear Or take an oath To prove their innocence Oh you remember that from somewhere I think it was like a crime or whatever. Yep. To prove their innocence. Or to prove their point. You can even say, no, don't say innocence. They prove their point. Hey, why are you late? Uh, a camel bit me. <laughs> really? I swear, I swear a camel bit me. Why did you swear? Because you really want to prove or convince me so yeah. basically when your listener is doubtful, you just want to like, I swear, no, no, that's what really happened. Because I'm kind of doubting that a camel bit you. Okay. Uh, we use it to give testimony. Mm -hmm. So when you go to court, you gotta swear. Or you gotta swear. You gotta, you know, they, in, in America they put your hand on the Bible, or if you're from a different religion, you can't hold put your hand on the on the Quran and uh -huh. say, "I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, most of the truth, sometimes the truth." So help me God, right? Mm -hmm. well, I've never done that. But... No, but you've seen you've never seen a movie like that. I yeah. swear to tell the you have astaghfirullah. Astaghfir I, I, I just got you to confess his sin. Okay, <laughs> so test. <laughs> Testimony mm -hmm. is another reason people take an oath, yeah. right? And it's kind of like the same first one. You're basically guaranteeing to the, the listeners yeah. that you're not going to lie, mm -hmm. right? So um, that's another reason. Uh, third reason is um, anger. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mariam is jumping on your back. You say, you better stop. You better stop. Uh -huh. And then he, you say, I swear, you better stop. Wallahi, you better stop. <laughs> so you could say, I swear. Mm -hmm. Now you're using it as a threat. Yeah. You're speaking out of anger, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You could say it playfully. Just goofing around. Oh, yeah, I guess. Playfully. I swear, man. That guy. You know? Mm -hmm. 
or a bunch of friends are joking around and one friend says, man, I swear, I'm going to kill you. Right? That doesn't mean you took an oath. Like, well, lying, man, I'm going to kill you. And the next day you show up with a dagger like, I'm sorry, I took an oath by Allah. Nothing personal. <laughs> like, you don't have to do that. Right? So these are different reasons why people take an oath. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I've heard you use the word kasam when you uh, talk to him in Delhi. Yeah, kasam. I swear. Uh -huh. Yeah. When when do you use it? Um, whenever we, like he um. Whenever is we it shoot. anger? Is it playfully? Is it because you're proving your point, or is it something else? And when I'm proving my point. When you're proving your point. Uh huh. When he steals from me. Yeah. Kasam, I didn't do it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's this is real life stuff. Mm -hmm. This is not some like hard grammar. This is common sense. Yeah. Right. So this is how, in most languages, uh, people take an oath. Yeah. This, is, this is why they do that. It doesn't matter what culture you come from. You probably use the oath for these things, yeah. right? But the ancient Arabs, Arabs had an extra reason. So okay. they used all of that, mm -hmm. but they had an extra reason. Okay. Yeah. I had a question about, uh, like, a personal question about how it's used in a hadith. Okay. Uh, so the wording of the hadith is, I mean, it's a longer hadith, but it's وَالَّذِي يَحْلِفُ بِهِ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ بْنُ عُمَرُ لَوْ أَنَّ لِأَحَدِهِمْ مِثْلَ أُحُدٍ ذَهَبًا فَأَنْفَقَهُ مَا قَبِلَ اللَّهُ مِنْهُ حَتَّى يُؤْمِنَ بِالْقَدَرِ So in the beginning, the وَالَّذِي? Yeah, وَالَّذِي يَحْلِفُ بِهِ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ بْنُ عُمَرُ So it's similar to... Um, it's similar to walladhi bi nafsi yadihi. So it's an, it's an emphasizer, which is again, to, to make something far more believable, I would argue. But I have to look at the hadith more carefully. So let's pull out the text of it and I'll analyze it, inshallah. Okay. Okay. So send that over to me by email. We'll, we'll look at it together, inshallah. Jazakallah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so ancient Arabs had an extra reason. So those reasons are for everybody. Mm -hmm. Right, but old Arabs back in the barbecue days, mm -hmm. they had one additional reason, and that was so that's number five now yeah. to get your attention. Now, let me tell you what that means to understand to get your attention, you have to understand that there is there's two. I don't want to give you the Arabic yet, so I'll give you the English. Okay. There's the object of the oath. And there's the subject of the oath. Yeah. You have to understand these two first. Okay? So let's understand these two. The object of the oath and the subject of the oath. Let me tell you what I mean by the object of the oath. Whatever comes after wa is, is the object of the oath. Oh, okay. Okay? So if I say, I swear by time, mm -hmm. then what's the object of the oath? Time. time. If I say, I swear by your mother, then the... Object of the oath is your mother. If I say I swear by the Quran, then the object of the oath is Quran. By the way, in Muslim ethics and Muslim mannerisms, we're not supposed to take oaths by anyone other than Allah. So if you are going to take an oath, just take it by Allah. Okay. bihi wal arham. Right? So the, the appropriate thing actually is to call on Allah when taking an oath. And that's why you should avoid taking an oath unless it's super serious. Yeah. Um by the way, playfully, the Arabs used to use it all the time. Oh, okay. Like even if you have Arab friends now, some of your Arab friends might say, Wallahi, I want ice cream so bad. Wallah. Wallah. Wallah, I haven't played Fortnite in like three days. Wallah. Like, Wallah, shawarma, man. Oh. So you, like, why are you doing Wallah for? And uh, Desis, like Indo-Pak people, when they hear somebody swear by Allah, they go, Allah, kikos am khali, oi, 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 oi. Prabhu, astaghfirullah, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Like they're landing a plane. <laughs> like they start doing all kinds of stuff. Like, you know? <laughs> the thing is, you're supposed to take an oath by Allah, first of all. And they did take it playfully. And you know what? Back in the barbecue days, ancient days, mm -hmm. they did that too. So then when they realized that Allah says that you can't, you know, we took an oath by Allah and we joked around like, Wallahi, I'm going to kill you, man. Yeah. Like, but if I took an oath by Allah, now I'm a believer in Allah, I better fulfill my oath. Right? I've done a major sin. So Allah revealed 
in the Quran ayat basically telling believers to chill out. So he said, "La yu'akhidukum Allahu bil-laghwi fi aymanikum, walakin yu'akhidukum bima kasabat qulubukum." That Allah will not hold you, and Allah will not, you know, check on you and hold you to account for uh, oaths that you took that when you were just playfully talking, when you were just shooting your mouth. But He will ask you about the oath you took that your hearts meant. So when somebody said, "Wallahi, I'm gonna punch you in the face," that wasn't really. They didn't really mean it. But if somebody said, Wallahi, I am going to punch you in the face. <laughs> Allah will ask about that oath. Why did you take that oath like that? Why did you bring my name into something like that? Yeah. Right? So yeah. Allah knows that Allah is telling us He knows the difference of where our hearts were when we said that. Yeah. Right? Anyway, so what's the object of the oath? Whatever comes after the subject. The subject. Or after the wa. Or, you know, so if in English, if I said, I swear by this campus, then the campus would be the sure. object. object yeah. Not subject, yeah. object. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you take some object and you use it to take your oath. Yeah. Okay. So whatever comes in English, whatever comes after the word by, I swear by, fill in the blank. Yeah. That blank is going to be the what? Object. object. Okay. Now, if I came to you and I said, I swear by Allah, and I walk away. Hello, what? You can't swear by Allah or swear by anything mm -hmm. and somebody says, oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Like if you told me, I swear to God. I was like, yeah, that's a good point. You didn't make a point. Yeah. I swear to God. What? There's a what that was supposed to come after that. That was your yeah. point. Mm -hmm. The I swear to God is just you being exclamatory. You're being excited. And then you had something to say. I swear to God, the, the game last night was amazing. So whatever came, what is the thing you actually wanted to say was the game last night was amazing. Yeah. That's what you wanted to say. Mm -hmm. But you wanted to get attention yeah. for that mm -hmm. by taking an oath first. Yeah. Right? So that thing, the game last night was amazing is actually your subject. Mm -hmm. That's your subject. Yeah. And so... If let's let's do an experiment. Let's see if the audience understands this. So you guys understand it or not. Uh, we read in the Quran a surah that many of you know by heart. Wal-asri in al insana lafi khusrin. Right? Mm -hmm. So I swear by time. Um, I'll I'll make it super simple. I won't do an accurate translation. Um, human beings are in loss okay mm -hmm. what's the object of the oath and what's the subject of the oath i let you take a second you can whisper to each other i want you guys to comment in in this english what's the object of the oath and what's the subject of the oath Good. Time is object. Everybody's okay with time is object? Yeah. And the rest of this, the thing you actually wanted to say, that's your subject. subject. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, the ancient Arabs did something. They said, it's not just, I swear. They wanted to use an object mm -hmm. to get everybody's attention mm -hmm. so they can talk about the subject. subject yeah. Okay? So... Let me give you an example. In ancient Arabia, if they knew that a, that a enemy forces are coming to attack our village, yeah. the guy would go up on the mountain, and they will. The enemy forces will be here by tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. The guy would go on top of the mountain, and he would say, "Wa sabaha," which is another kind of oath. I swear by tomorrow morning. I swear by tomorrow morning, mm -hmm. and the reason he's saying that is like a ding, 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 ding. Oh, like a. Like an alarm bell, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And everybody shows up because when he swore by tomorrow morning, everybody's thinking, oh, something's going down tomorrow morning. We better find out, right? Mm -hmm. And then when they get there, he says the army is coming. Yeah. So he used the object tomorrow morning to get everybody's what? Attention. attention. 
right? Mm -hmm. So the object of the oath can be used to get the attention of an audience, yeah. right? And why do you want their attention? Because maybe the subject that you wanted to talk about, they're not paying enough attention to it. Mm -hmm. So you want to get their attention first, yeah. then you want to tell them the subject. Mm -hmm. So one way we can look at this ayah in the Quran, and inshallah, when we do balagha, we'll, we'll do all of that. You know, Allah is proving his point. Allah is giving testimony. Allah is angry. Allah is never playful with, with an oath. So we, we want to apply that one. But he's getting our attention yeah. because maybe we're not paying enough attention. And all of that will be applied to our analysis of Surah Al-Asr. When I gave my long lectures on Surah Al-Asr, you heard these things. Like we talk about each of those elements that are inside, I swear by time. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, the object and subject thing is clear. Yeah. Okay, so that's five now. Mm -hmm. And the Quran adds another extra reason that even the Arabs never used. Mm -hmm. The Quran added, so the, the first five, how many we have? Five, right? Five, yeah. The first five are still true possibly in the Quran. That can happen except for the playful thing. If people do it, it might happen, but not with Allah. Allah does not speak without purpose, right? So four out of the five are applicable to the Quran yeah. and we can, we can seek those in the Quran. But the Quran adds one more reason that never existed with people and never existed with the Arabs. Arab, yeah. It's the Quran added its own. Mm -hmm. And what's that? The object becomes proof of the subject. The object is evidence for the subject. The object is proof for the subject. Which is amazing. It changes your study of how you look at oaths. And every time you look at an oath in the Quran, mm -hmm. from now on, yeah. this is not even grammar. Now this is a Quran study. Now you're going to look at what's the object, or what's the subject. Mm -hmm. Oh, for this subject, he used this object. Yeah. Was he using this object because? How many times does Allah swear in the Quran? Oh, there's lots of times. Wal asri, wal fajri, wal layli, wal subhi, wal shamsi, wal duhaha, wal qamri thatalaha. Watini, wazaytuni, waturis. You see the, the ease, 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 the jars, mm -hmm. right? Wal adiyati dabha, wal mursalati urfa, wal dariyati darwa. Oh my God. There's so many oaths are a thing in the Quran. I like look at it like that. Yeah, now you will. Yeah, and, and so many in Juz Amma. You know, wal duha, wal layli idha saja. Not the mawadda, the was, right? Yeah. So, watini, wazaytuni, waturisi nina, wahada al baladi al amini. Right, those are all oaths. Well, Adiati Lobha, Fal Muriati Kadha, Fal Murirati Subha, Athana Behina Kafa, Satna Behima is one giant oath. We'll see one day. That's all one giant oath. So, oaths are like a, a powerful subject in the Quran, and that's all coming from Batak Aflam. Wow, that wow is absolutely a wow, <laughs> right? It's a wow subject in the Quran. So this is a picture I wanted to give you and I want to show you just a glimpse of this because inshallah when we're done with our language study the more language study we do the more we're going to start diving into Quran right so look at this let's just look at stick to this example it could be that Allah is telling us I swear by time you're in trouble you're all in trouble which means Allah is speaking out of anger right mm -hmm. He could also be taking a testimony. You don't believe me, do you? Yeah. You don't think you're in trouble, do you? I swear by time you are. I'm testifying. By, by, by way of the oath. It could be that to prove the, the, the point, meaning when your readers are doubtful, which is similar to testimony, yeah. they're, they go hand in hand, meaning people don't believe they're in loss. Yeah. And Allah says, I'm swearing by time that they are. Right? Get your attention. Get your attention means Asr means the time that's the end of the day oh, okay. You know like You have like a timer that says It goes off if you have 4 minutes left Or 3 minutes left yeah. In a contest or something mm -hmm. like that And the contestants are like oh, 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 You know Because yeah. their time's running out mm -hmm. Right The same way when Asr is saying Time's running out yeah. Pay attention You're still losing yeah. So it's the attention thing Right And then what is the last one the object becomes proof of the subject. Yeah, yeah. What does that mean in this ayah? Time is proof that human beings are in loss, oh. which is incredible. Allah is saying somebody could be rich, somebody could be poor, somebody could be healthy, somebody could be sick, 
Somebody could be a boy, somebody could be a girl. Somebody could live in a safe country, somebody could live in a war zone. Somebody could be starving, somebody could be well-fed, right? Yeah. People could be in any different kind of situation. Mm -hmm. But you know what? They're all losing time, aren't they? Yeah. Time is, you can never gain time, you can only lose time. Lose time. Yeah. time is the biggest proof that we're always losing. Right? So he used time as proof. When say, somebody says, oh yeah, human beings are in laws, prove it. Well, the biggest proof of it is what? Time. So he used the object as proof for the subject. Wow. Right? Mm -hmm. That's actually like a very, very good example. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. Right? Other examples of oaths in the Quran blow your mind. Like they just blow your mind. I thought you were going to say balaha. Yeah, balaha your mind. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's it's just a really fascinating subject. Now let's go back. So you guys have taken these notes. You've written yeah. some things on about wow, right? Let's tell you something more about wow. Wow, so far I said means I swear by. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. We wrote a bunch of things about it. There's another wa in Arabic. And by the way, this I swear by wa is a half of what? Yeah. Which means the, the next word better be? Yeah. Jar, right? There's another wa in the Quran. And this guy just means and. Okay. And. And it's a half of nothing. Of nothing. It doesn't make something rafa. It doesn't make something nasab. It doesn't make something yeah, jar. Yeah, yeah. It has no effect on the next word. Mm -hmm. And I want you to understand the, the difference between these two. Yeah. When you're reading Quran, Mm -hmm. And you read Wallahu ala kulli shay'in qadir. Mm -hmm. This is in the Quran. Yeah. You see a why in the beginning? Astaghfirullah inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. If some student says this why is a harf of jar, Ustad. Mm -hmm. If it's a harf of jar, what should happen to the word Allah? Uh, but it's not. Yeah. Which means I cannot translate this one, I swear by. Oh, okay. This must be the other wa, which is what? And. And Allah. So on, so, so on, so forth. Okay. So does it have to have like a haraka at the top? Yeah, it, it does. You're right. I didn't put the harakat here, but here. Yep. So they look exactly the same. Mm -hmm. But the grammar student knows the difference because one of them jarafalized yeah. and the other one didn't. didn't right? Oh, okay. Now. So I, in order for it to be I swear by, it has to uh, make the other word jar. That's right. I am the father of Husna, Waliya, Khuda, Imad, Iman, sorry, Walid, sorry, sorry, Walid, Walid, Iman, and Khalid. Okay, that's their names. Yeah. Now, is it true that I'm the father of Husna? Yeah. yeah. Is it also true that I'm the father of Waliya? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it also true that I'm father of Huda? Mm -hmm. And of Imad? Yeah. And of Walid? Mm -hmm. And of Iman? And of Khalid? Mm -hmm. yeah. So I could say this another way. I am the father of Husna, the father of Waliya, the father of Huda, the father of Imad, the father of Walid, the father of Iman, the father and the father of and the father of Khalid. I could say that, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if I said it like this, this long paragraph, mm -hmm. father Mudaf, Husna yeah. Mudaf ilay. father Mudaf, Waliya Mudaf ilay. father Mudaf, Huda Mudaf ilay. father Mudaf. Iman, before the of, after the of, before the of, after the of, right? Yeah. Then Father Mudaf, Walid Mudaf ilay. Yeah. Father Mudaf, Iman Mudaf ilay. Mm -hmm. Father Mudaf, Khalid Mudaf ilay. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. But I could have saved myself a lot of time and just said Father once. Yeah. And then said all of them, right? Mm -hmm. Would that still make sense to you the same yeah. way? Yeah, yeah, it would. Right? Mm -hmm. You know what that means? That I have one Mudaf, yeah. but all these guys the are Mudaf ilay. Yeah. But you said nothing should come between a mudaf and a mudafile unless, which is something I didn't tell you before, unless they're chained to each other. Oh, okay. Are these kids chained to each other? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're all stuck to me. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So you know what the Arabs do? Watch this. Allah is the master of the skies. Mm -hmm. 
and the earth. You can say the master of the skies and the master of the earth. Which is easier to say? Which one is easier to say? Master of the skies and the earth or master of the skies and master of the earth? First, one. First one's easier to say. Okay, so what happens in Arabic is Rabbu as-samawati wal ardi now notice, master of the skies and, and the earth. And the earth yeah. In other words, the and lets me add another mudafile. Oh, okay. And is like a chain link. Mm -hmm. Okay? One nasi and people. Yeah. So, wal jinni and the jinn. Mm -hmm. Wal malaikati. Right? Mm -hmm. They're all just add-ons to the same mudafilay. Is the master basically I'm saying Rabbul Samawati, wa Rabbul Ardi, wa Rabbul Nasi, wa Rabbul Jinni, wa Rabbul Malaikati. Yeah. But I didn't have to keep saying Rabbu 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 Rabbu. I can just say wa 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 and the effect continues. Yeah. So what does and do? And can you can be used to continue the effect. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now look at this. What does inna do? Inna makes a word. Nasab. Inna Allaha. Wa rasula. Wa rasula. Wa al-mu'minina. Wa al-mala'ikata. The word, the word Allah is nasab. Yeah. And, and because of and, whatever this was, its effect is carried over. Rasul became nasab. Yeah. And whatever Rasul was nasab status, right? Yeah. Uh, al Mu'minina became nasab. And because of al this same, same inna is now making al malaikata nasab. Yeah. Why? Because and can chain the effect. It carries on and on and on and on with and. Yeah. And we'll see that inshallah in action. I'll explain that to you over and over until that becomes second nature. But Ustad, how am I going to know when a wa means and and when a wa means I swear by? Hold on. Don't jump in the ocean. Let me walk you there. Okay. And you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Okay? The, the oaths are very, very clear. And you can always tell them apart from when it's, uh, when it's not an oath. Uh, questions? Yeah, exactly what you just explained. That's yep. pretty much what we're getting right now. Yeah, you're going to have to wait for me to help you see that, inshallah. Okay? But you just need to know there's two of them. There's the wow, that's a harf of jar. Yeah. That always means I swear by. Yeah. And the wow, that's not a harf of jar. That's just a neutral wow. Hey, whatever y'all were doing before, just keep on doing it, okay? Yeah. That neutral hangout wow means what? And. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? That means and. Even when they're both Jar Umra Sheikh, we'll see that there's very clearly a difference. Common sense will tell us. It won't be a grammar solution. It'll be a common sense solution. When you study grammar, you start analyzing words like this. And then you stop lose, lose, lose sight of common sense. And then we're going to look back and say, oh, that's pretty obvious. So you're going to have to marry both common sense and grammar together yeah. when you figure this stuff out. Okay. okay. All right. Take a quick break. Five minutes. And then we're going to start our new work. Inshallah. Jawad, you can take over the screen. All right. Um, Ustad, can I go ahead and answer some of the remaining questions in the emails? Yes, absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> Hold on. I saw somebody's comment that I wanted to mention very quickly um, okay I think it scrolled too far uh, somebody named Haina was asking whether I'm looking at Facebook or or YouTube I'm looking at everything um, and I actually did answer your question already I'm not sure if you saw my answer I answered it on Facebook but um, you asked about and how come it's not gel uh, it is gel but 
the word duha is non-flexible. So it doesn't show its junk. Um, here. This alif uh, maqsura at the end makes it non-flexible. So it's not going to show its job, but it is job. Okay. Uh, I'm going to be going over mostly email questions for this break, inshallah, because we do have a couple of those. Somebody asked about the ayah. Somebody asked about this ayah uh, in the email, and they said, this is in Surah Al-Hadid, by the way, for anybody who wants to look it up. Uh, and they asked, how come Jannatin here is Jaw? Uh, and they're asking, did Ila make Jannatin Jaw? And if it did, then how come? If Maghfirah is already the victim of Ila. So this is what we just talked about. This while here is connecting Jannatin to maghfiratin so maghfiratin is the victim of ila and then uh, mir rabbikum comes in between and then there's another victim to ila that's connected by wow so this wow that we just covered uh, that connects things together it can also connect things over a long distance and again don't get too caught up on how to recognize it yet we'll we'll talk about recognition uh, in detail inshallah uh, we will talk about recognition in detail, and that's something that you guys will you'll get to the point where you can where you can understand it very easily. Um, don't get too caught up on it yet right now. Just try to focus on understanding the concepts, and we'll work on recognition. So I hope that's clear. Um, this jannatin it's jar because it's connected to maghfiratin by this wa. Somebody asked why when we're or when we see translations are certain words in brackets uh, in the English translation. The reason for that is because when it comes to Arabic, there's a lot of stuff. Arabic is a very robust language, right? You can say a lot in Arabic without many words. But in English, in order to fully encompass the meaning of what's being said in Arabic, you need to add things that aren't exactly in uh, in the Arabic, right? So if you're trying to translate word for word, you won't get the actual full meaning of what the Arabic is saying. So these extra words are added in the brackets to try to uh, get back some of that lost meaning. And even then, the full meaning still, it's, it's very hard to bring the full meaning every time, even when you're adding these words in the brackets. Um, but that's what they're for. I hope that was clear. Somebody asked about uh, when we're dealing with special mudafs, we have, for example, min ba'dihim, and this one, uh, so we have min, hauf of jar, ba'di is its victim, that's why ba'di is jar, and then we have ba'dihim as in idafa, uh, and that's clear. But how come sometimes we have, for example, min qablu, and now we have min, hauf of jar, but qablu after it is rafa. This is a very special case, and this is something that we will cover when we get to it. Uh, that there's going to be a lot of things. Uh, the answer to them is going to be we'll we'll cover it when we get to it, uh, and that's just something that you're going to have to live with. Unfortunately, well, unfortunately for you guys, um, it's very fortunate for us, but that's uh, something you guys are going to have to live with because if we explained it now, it would confuse you more. So min qablu, we'll get to it. I'll see if Ustad wants to cover this now when he gets back, inshallah. But 
Um, I'll leave that up to him. Normally, it would be min qabli something. Okay, so here's another question. Oh, also, before I get into this question, um, so at the top of this document, I have some links and emails for you all to take note of. If you have any Arabic questions, this is the email you want to send it to, Arabic at Bayina.com. If you have any technical questions, you want to send it to contact at Bayina.com. If you have a submission for the poster uh, that is going to get hung up on campus, then you can send that to my email, jawad at Bayina.com. Uh, and if you need the workbook and the answer key, follow this link, uh, the study resource link, inshallah. <clears throat> Why is Akbaru light in Allahu Akbaru? Um, Salik Ahmed Khan, Akbaru is partly flexible. That's why it's light. <clears throat> and for those of you asking about the website, there is a, uh, the website is still under works. That's why there's still some some things that aren't exactly fully optimized, uh, but we are working on that. That's why we're still on social media right now, is because we're still working on that stuff. When did I graduate from the DREAM program? Uh, Muhammad Razin Khan. I did the dream program way back in 2016. So that's when I graduated. I did it from August or fall 2015 to spring 2016. Okay, back to Arabic. So somebody asked about when we have a harf jar attached to the letter kaf. Uh, how can a harf of jar be attached to another harf of jar when we said that harf of jar can uh, only be attached to an ism? So this kaf at the end of these of these uh, fragments, they these are not the harf of jar. Yeah. These are the pronouns. Uh, remember when we talked about attached pronouns and we were talking about the pronouns anta, antuma, antum, anti, antuma, antunna? Those pronouns became ka, kuma, kum, ki, kuma, and kunna. So this is the pronoun ka, which means anta, you. It's not the harf of jar, kaf, which can mean like or for or as. Uh, and the way we can tell the difference is that the Harf of jar will always come at the beginning before the ism, and the attached pronoun will always come at the end of the word. It'll always be attached at the end. So the harf of jar kaf will be at the beginning, the pronoun kaf will be at the end. Okay, we're back. You all, can yes. I remove the screen? Uh, what question were you dealing with? Just now? Somebody was asking, mm. uh, somebody asked about when we have a harf of jar and it's attached to the pronoun ka, minka, ilayka, uh, and so on. They were, they, they were confused as to how a harf of jar could be attached to another harf of jar. 
There was one oh. question um, I said I'd ask you about. Yeah. It's min qablu. Okay, yeah. I thought that was outstanding. Let's talk about that. I'll go back to page 22, guys. Everybody, go to page 22. That's your special mudafs, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, special mudafs are special for lots of reasons. And one of them is they always want to be mudaf. Mm -hmm. Which means they always want a what? Mudaf ilay. They always want a mudaf ilay. Okay? Mm -hmm. So let's look at the word qabl and ba'd. Uh, qabl. So, qabl al Maghribi. So Qabla would be the mudaf and Maghribi would be the mudaf. Okay. Okay. Um, before Maghrib. Qabla Maghribi means before Maghrib. Okay. Then I say Min. Min is a harf of? Jar. Harf of Jar. Yeah. So it can't be Qabla anymore. Yeah. What do I have to do? Make it Jar. Yeah, how? Min qabli al maghribi. Yeah. yeah. Min made it. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes the Arabs want you to guess what their mudafili was going to be and they don't want to say it. Oh, okay. So you know what they do? They say min qabl without saying the mudafili. Oh, okay. When they do that, the word qabl, who's a special mudaf, says, hey, I'm special. I need a mudafili. And the Arab says, I don't want to give you a right now. And the word qabl basically has a psychological breakdown and says, you know what? Oh, you want it, you want it, you don't want to give me a Oh yeah. Now in Rafa or Nasab or Jar, I'm just gonna have an ooh. Just because you took my mudafile. So I don't care if there's a min before me, mm -hmm. I'm still gonna put what there? Qabl. Ooh. And if you say why, because you took away his mudafile. Now, if you give him his mudafile back, min him. Hey, you gave me a mudafile. I can be back to normal. I can cooperate with grammar. But if you take my mudafile, I'm gonna become non-flexible with u all the time. I don't care if there's a min before me, inna before me, nothing before me. I'll just be qablu. I don't care. Even if you want me to be jar, I'll look like qablu. I don't care. And so you find in the Quran even min qablu. Yeah. Why does that happen? The simple reason when the it's called the mudaf ilay mahluf when the mudaf ilay is missing. Oh, okay. When you take the special mudafs and you take their mudaf ilay away, mm -hmm. then these words basically spaz out. They have muscle atrophy, yeah. and they become stuck in mm -hmm. rafa. What's happening? I don't have my mudaf ilay. Yeah. Ooh, that hurts. They, have they cramp up with ooh, and doesn't matter if the rafa is subrajat. They still say, ooh. ooh yeah. Why is that done? That's a later discussion. I'll explain in detail why that's done. Why would a speaker remove the mudafile? Right? Mm -hmm. If I said I said before Maghrib, right? Before? Yeah. Now, but if I said before, doesn't that leave you wondering before what? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. It's as if I want you to think, fill in this blank yourself. Okay. And it may be that it's not just before Maghrib. Maybe, maybe there's more than one answer. Maybe there's multiple answers. Yeah. And I don't want to give you just one answer. I want you to think of multiple answers. Yeah. And if I want you to think of multiple answers, mm -hmm. and I don't want to give you them, I want you to use your imagination, then I'll take the mudafile away. Oh. So sometimes the Arabic language is forcing a reader, a listener to think. And that's one of those cases. So that's that's why you will find in the Quran something like min qablu. And you will also find min ba'du. Where, which are amazing. Let me show you this uh, ayah and pull it up. So beautiful. All this stuff is beautiful. I just really love it. Your favorite. Not your favorite. My favorite, yeah. My favorite. 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 Say favorite. Favorite? Yes. Favorite? Yep. Say favorite, guys. Min qablu wa min. Okay, lillahi al-amr. Allah says, Lillahi al-amru min qablu 
wa min ba'du. Min is a harf of jar. It's supposed to mean qabl into jar, yeah. but it's a special mudaf, and clearly there's no mudaf after it. Yeah. So it became crazy and said, I don't care if you want me to be jar, I'm still going to be qablu. I'm not really rafa, I'm just acting like it. Okay. And min ba'du did the same thing. Yeah. Now, this ayah is so beautiful because roughly it means Allah alone owns the decision before and after right mm -hmm. now the, think about that yeah what allah did not say is before what and after what right mm -hmm. before this discussion after this discussion mm -hmm. before coming of muhammad after coming of muhammad before this generation after this generation yeah. right before this decision after this decision before this incident after this incident the fill in the blanks are infinite but doesn't matter what you fill the blank in with, one thing will remain true. Allah alone owns the decision. Yeah. So it's so beautiful that the mudafilays were taken away mm -hmm. because then human beings will fill them with everything in their life and the ayah will still hold true. So the blank was created on purpose. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is also a very beautiful study in the Quran it's called Hadh. Inshallah, again, these are juicy things that are in the future lying there for us when we when, when we get to a certain There's point. A nice steak laying there. And now I want to talk to you about, I want to get your minds ready for uh, a new study. And that's the study of sentences. Yeah. Inshallah, we have, we're maybe a month away from starting to study sentences because when this intensive is over and you take your break, then we're going to start studying sarf a little bit. So we're going to not do grammar so much. We'll do this new thing called sarf mm -hmm. uh, and get a little bit our feet wet with it. And then come back to grammar. So that's how I like to teach grammar, sarf, then back to grammar. Okay. Right? But what I want you to know from now is something called ism sentences. Okay? okay? Ism sentences. Okay? There are two kinds of sentences in Arabic. Ism sentences and fi'il sentences. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. But today I just want to talk to you about ism, ism sentences just a little bit. On page 32 in your notes. Go ahead. Page 32. That's right. That's the Arabic word for ism sentences. Jumla means sentence. Mm -hmm. And ismiya means ism, ism based. Oh. Right? Ismified sentence. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and this is, in the basic sense, finding the invisible is. We had briefly discussed that in the previous intensive. I'll build on that just a little bit because I really want your focus on fi'l now, actually. So I want to just share some things with you. Basically, in Arabic, the word is doesn't exist, right? And what, the moment you have is, it can't be one of the five fragments. The five fragments are less than a sentence. But the moment you have is somewhere, that's a complete sentence, okay. right? So after you learn your five fragments, the next thing to kind of start getting used to is sentences. Sentence. Yeah. And the, there's two kinds of sentences. I keep saying fi'il sentences and ism sentences. But we did five fragments using the ism. Yeah. So we're going to do ism sentences. Okay. okay. Now, ism sentences are pretty easy to spot. Let's start with Allahu Akbar. Right? Mm -hmm. um, we learned five fragments. I'm just going to put them on the side here so we can just kind of reference them mudaf, over and over again. Mudaf, mudaf, so, mudaf, 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 I want to know if these two words are mudaf mudafile, harf of jar, harf of nasab, masul sefa, ismul ishara, mushara. That's what I want to do. I want to run through the elimination process. This can definitely not be mudaf mudafile. Mudafile because of it has al. It can't be harf of jar or harf of nasab. I actually, I'll change the order a little bit. I'll put ismul ishara and mushara here because I'll show you why. The pointer thingy, right? Mm -hmm. It can't be mudaf mudafile. Yeah. That's out. Harf of jar, there is no, there is no harf of jar here. Yeah. Harf of nasab, there is no harf of nasab here. There is no pointer here. Hada hadi, hada hadani ha ulai, hadi hatani. None of that's here. Yeah. So it's none of those. So four gone.
Maybe it's f- number five, Masuf. which is what? Masuf and Sifa. Sifa. The only way to prove Masuf Sifa is you find four properties matching. Oh, okay. Okay? Yeah. Four properties don't match because the word Allah is proper and okay. Akbar is not. Uh, yeah, because of the Al. There's no Al there. Yeah. Right? It's mm-hmm. And it's partly, Akbar is partly flexible. That's why it's light. Mm-hmm. But it's common. Yeah. Because it's common, the four properties didn't match. Yeah. Which means it's not that either. Mm-hmm. Which means it's none of these five. Right? Mm-hmm. When it's none of these five, then this is is Allah is greater. Allah is greater. Okay. Allah is. Oh yeah, because if there's none of like if there's no mafuf or any of that, you just put the is. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Okay. That's when you put the is. Mm-hmm. That clear? Yeah. Um now we get two parts. The part before the is and the part yeah, after, the after the is, right? Yeah. We're going to discuss those in depth Because that's when we're going to start getting into sentence structure That's a lot of fun to do that part I don't want to give you that headache yet It's actually not a headache, it's like a head rush It's pretty cool Because then you really start seeing sentences for what they are And what's going on in in the Arabic language It's really, really cool stuff But for now, I want to do these exercises That are on page 30 uh, uh, Actually 32, let's read through it Finding that is The hardest one is at the bottom one, two, three, four, five. Number five says a break in the chain. chain. So it says a rajul fiddar. Let me write that here. That's not an ayah of the Quran. Let me write another ayah instead. The lika min ayatillahi. That's an ayah of the Quran. The yeah. lika min ayatillahi. Okay. Now, min is a harf of jar. jar. That's so that means that this is the jar. And this is the majroo. So we're good on that. Yeah. Ayati looks like a mudaf, and the word Allah he looks like a mudaf ilay. So this would be a jar majroo and a mudaf mudaf ilay. We found it. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now I want to see if dalika mm-hmm. is connected with any of these. Dalika no. is never going to be a mudaf. Yeah, because there's a pointer. So that's not going to happen. Yeah. It's not a harf of jar or a harf of nasab. They're, those are supposed to come before. Right, yeah. So that you can't connect it to a harf of jar that's coming after. Yeah. So that's out. It is a pointer, but is does it have a musharun ilay? No. No, because a musharun ilay is supposed to be right after and it's supposed to have what on it? Al on it. Mosul mm-hmm. sifa is out of the question. Yeah. Because there's no two words that have the same properties here. Yeah. There's nothing here. So what do I do? Dalika is. Minayatillah. That is from the miraculous signs of Allah. Oh, okay. Okay. So that process, right now I'm walking you slowly through it. I, I it wasn't this, it wasn't this, it wasn't this, it wasn't this, it wasn't this. Slowly it'll just start becoming natural. Yeah. Okay. Now that's the hard one. The hard and I'll give you the example that's here too. Arrajulu fiddari. Let's do that one. Arrajulu fiddari. Right? Yeah. Now, fi, is it any one of these guys? Uh, yeah. Which one? Jar. Half of jar? Yeah. Mariam, Adari would become what? Um, jar and Jar and Jar Majroor. Jar and Jar Majroor. Yeah. Excellent. So that is a fragment. Mm-hmm. But a Rajulu, yeah. could it be a Mudaf? No. Why it not? Has it has Al. Could it be beat up by a half of Jar? No, no, because there's no half of Jar before it. Yeah. Could it be a victim of a harf of nasab? No. 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 Could it be an ismul ishara? No. no. Could it be a mosuf? To be a mosuf, you have to have something that matches four properties. Yeah. Is there something that matches four properties? Mm-mm. No. So it's kind of hanging out by himself, and it's not connected to fiddar. Oh, okay. So whatever arrajul means is whatever iddar fiddar means. Oh, okay. The man arrajul means the man yeah. is, is fiddar in the house. The man is in the house. The man is in the house. Okay. The thing is, that's how I figured out there's an is here. Oh. Man is in the house. Yeah. Got it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now that's the hard, the hardest one. The, you know, the uh, break in the chain. Mm-hmm. Let's work backwards to number four. What's number four? Proper followed by common. Ah, uh, that's like this. It's so common in the Quran. So so common. Look at this. And these are shortcuts to find the is. Proper followed by common common means. You know how we say Allahu Ghafurun yeah. Rahimun. Actually, you find Wallahu Ghafurun Rahimun. 
right? Wallahu mm -hmm. rahim. Is this wa I swear by Allah or does this mean and Allah? And Allah. How do you know? Because it didn't jarify the other It doesn't jarify. Brilliant. What do you mean? Is that clear? Yeah. So and Allah, and then is the word Allah proper? Uh, yes. And can you see that Ghafoor and Rahim are common? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The moment you have proper followed by common, you put an is in between them. Yeah. Allah, Allah is. is extremely forgiving, always loving and caring. You just drop in is. Proper followed by common is dead giveaway. Yeah. Okay. If I said, Al insanu da'ifun. Da'if means weak. Mm -hmm. Insan means human being. You weak. see the proper in common? Weak human. No, you see, now that's I'm really glad you made that mistake. Weak human. When you say weak human, is there an is in between? No. No, this sounds like noun adjective. Yeah. To be noun adjective, you have to have the same uh, properties. How many properties have four. to be? Four. Is this the same four properties? No, because no, no. this is proper and this is common. common. So it's almost there, but not quite. Yeah. When it's not quite, you can't translate it like a fragment. Yeah. When it's proper followed by common, you have to translate it as the human is weak. weak. Now it's a sentence. Yeah. Now it's no longer weak. Human is a fragment. Yeah. But the human is weak is a sentence. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jump ten times. Okay. Until I make the next example. Go. I'm not tired. I want to sleep like pretty good. Like I had a good sleep. Yeah, but I went to sleep before. I went to sleep at like four after we got home. I'm like super tired. Okay, come back. What's so proper followed by common makes sense? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You don't have to memorize that. As it comes up, I'll keep going back to page 32 and say, hey, remember pro proper followed by common? That happened again. That happened again. Right? Yeah. In Allah ala kulli shay'in qadir. Um, it says the shortcut, a half of nasab and its vict and its ism, like inna is ismu inna, yeah. is usually followed by is. Yes, yeah. So if you see, for example, in Allah over here, right? Yeah. It's right, so it's inna, mm -hmm. and the word Allah is ismu inna. Yeah. What you can do if you see this in the Quran is you can almost all the time just put an is after that. Mm -hmm. So this means certainly Allah is, is whatever's coming. Okay, okay? Mm -hmm. so in Surah Al Asr, you saw inna al insana, but if you see inna al insana, that's the inna and the ismu inna. Yeah. So certainly the human being, and yeah. automatically you can put an is. Certainly the human being is whatever's coming. Okay. So in al muttaqina in the Quran, in al muttaqina, no, that's in al muttaqina. So in al muttaqina fi jannatin wa nahar, in al muttaqina. Certainly the people of taqwa, mm -hmm. I'll automatically put an is after it. Yeah. Certainly the people of taqwa are. Mm -hmm. It just goes immediately. Yeah. Okay. So that's a quick giveaway for the is. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, you already did pointers. When they don't have al, al. then yeah. there's an is there. Yeah. So you did that one already, right? And then the final one is actually page 18. Remember, huwa mm huma -hmm. yeah. Let's say them again. Huwa huma hum, hiya huma hunna, anta antuma antum, anti antuma antunna, ana nahnu. Those are your um, uh, rafa pronouns. Yeah. Usually, right after them, there's an is. So if you see ana in the Quran, it doesn't just mean I. It probably means I am. Yeah, yeah. Not every time, but many times. Or huwa in the Quran won't just mean he. It'll mean he is. Or hiya won't just mean she. It'll mean she is. Yeah. So you're going to start finding the invisible is pretty mm -hmm. quickly. Okay? The more technical way of looking at it, which is absolutely important, is going to come sometime later, inshallah. Mm -hmm. So this is just... You know, an exercise, I think we should do this exercise before I give you your break. Okay. Find the invisible is. Did we do some of this before? No. Not really, right? No. So, okay. What I want you to do is spend some time, maybe 10 minutes, and solve all of these. Find the invisible is. Okay. Okay. You just want us to write the is? Like, yeah. And Jawad, if people have uh, vocabulary questions, actually, no. Don't Don't even focus on vocabulary. Just try to find where the is would go based on the hints that are on top. So that's British Yeah. The that looks like the 
Let's number them together so we all have the same kind of numbering sequence. One, two, three, four, five, six, then seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay, so that's it. Hanif, I, I know that that question exists. Inshallah, there's time coming for it. Ansai, I see your question about the harf of nasab and the victim far away. What you can do is you can put them together. Um, but we'll, that's a more tricky situation, so we'll, we'll have to wait for that one. These are the more simpler cases. Of you just want us to write it inside of the word? Just or? so w let's just let me help you with the first one. So, yeah. what I'm saying is the parts that are connected to each other, you can draw a line under them. Oh, okay. So, min is connected to ayati, ayati is connected to the word Allah. By the way, ayati is wrongly spelled, should be ta mm -hmm. over here. Not the wrong time. Um, and then dhalika mm -hmm. is not connected, right? There's yeah. no al after it. Uh -huh. So there's no musharun ilay. So you just put a draw a line here. Oh, okay. And that line means I would have put an is here. Oh, okay. okay? That makes sense, yeah. So for each of them, when the things are connected, mm -hmm. then you draw a cross. And the first line you find, yeah. draw a line there. Okay. Okay. This is page 32, everybody. Ustad, did you already answer the question about if uh, the health of Nasr and his victim are far apart, then where's the break? No, I we're not dealing with that yet. Okay. We will separately deal with that. Yes, we're solving page 32, Zenit. Uh, number one, yeah, I can explain. So there are five possibilities, right? Um, but the easiest, there's two answers, two ways of looking at it. You can say that Valika is not connected to any of them. So it's a break in the chain, which would be number five. And that's why you get a minayatillah. Another would be, I think it's number two. Pointer yeah, followed pointer by. followed by anything other than al. You just get an is. So five and two both apply. Actually, for all of these, five applies. I want you to see that five applies to all of them, but there are shorter answers, shorter ways to get to that answer with the other four. That's really what it is. Those four are shortcuts. And these, these shortcuts are not, um, especially the breaking the chain thing, is not from any grammar book. This is something I invented to help you at least get your feet wet with what's Jumla Ismiya eventually. Yeah, there's a lot of confusion on this concept. Yeah, saying I'm confused isn't enough. I want specifics. Like people are asking to explain all of the different points, all five of them. Okay, let's give you a give everybody a couple of minutes. Let them struggle through it, and then I'll explain again. I'll actually explain each of these. So I won't even wait for your answers. I'll explain each of them, inshallah. But I want you to struggle with them for a little bit. Because once you struggle with them and then I explain them, then it's going to stick in your head. So I want you to, you know, kind of just melt your brain cells a little bit. Hasru, it's going to be better. Relax. This is proper, so. So proper, so. Proper, so. Proper, so. Proper, so. Proper, so.
Okay, let's start over. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Five fragments. Pretend you've never heard any of this before. Come to it with a fresh mind, okay? Five fragments. The mudaf and the mudafide. The purpose of the mudaf and mudafide is to say something, something of something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? That's why you have a mudaf mudafide. Mm -hmm. But when you say something of something in any language, if I say the pen of Ahmed, then that's not a sentence. The pen of Ahmed is yellow. No, that's a sentence. Yeah. What did I need? An is. But just the pen of Ahmed is not a sentence. Yeah. But it's more than just one word. It's two words, yeah. or actually three words in English, pen of Ahmed. Mm -hmm. That's called a fragment. Yeah. So our first fragment, which means it's not quite a sentence, yeah. is mudaf and mudafideh. Yeah. Okay. The second fragment is half of ja. ja yeah. Let's just say fi. Fi means in. Yeah. Okay. So if I say fil masjid, in the masjid, the words in the masjid, so it's a harf of jar, you know, the, the H-O-J or jar plus majroor, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you translate it, whatever harf it is, and whatever word comes after it. Mm -hmm. So fil masjid would be in the masjid. masjid. Yeah. Is the word in the masjid a sentence? Mm -hmm. No. There is a person in the masjid. Or in the masjid, there are lots of people. Yeah. Right? Or if I say, with the house, with the house, mm -hmm. right? With the house come many problems. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. Or if I say, yeah. on the car, mm -hmm. that's not enough. On the ca uh, uh, There's a cat on the car. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. You need something to make it a sentence. Yeah. A jar majur by itself is not a sentence. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it's another kind of what? Fragment. Yeah. A fragment means a piece of something. Mm -hmm. So it can be a piece of a sentence, yeah. but it's not a sentence. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then there's the harf of nasr, right? So it's the the inna plus ismu inna, right? That's what that is. Yeah. Okay. So if I say inna Allah, certainly Allah. Yeah. Certainly Allah. Is that a sentence? No. no. It's, or if I say la kinna al birra, however goodness, however, yeah. or but goodness, is that a sentence? Mm -hmm. No. If I say but goodness is what we need. Yeah. Now that's a sentence. Mm -hmm. Okay. If I say, hopefully this microphone. Was that a sentence? No. Hopefully this microphone won't break down. Yeah. That's a sentence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which means the half of nasab and the ism yeah. are just those two together. Like la'alla means hopefully. Yeah. Right. So when you say hopefully microphone, then you didn't make a sentence. You only made a fragment. Right. Yeah. Okay. So another way of thinking about fragment is you don't have an is yet. Yeah. You you have two words together, but you don't have an is yet. Yeah. Right? The the ismul ishara mm -hmm. and musharun ilay, the I I and the M I are something like this something. This mm -hmm. car, this house, this you know, this masjid, yeah. this class. If I say this class, mm -hmm. is that a sentence? Yeah. Really? This class oh, is a no, sentence? This class, sentence? this class is long? That's a that's sentence. A sentence. Yeah. This class is a lot of work? That's, a, that's sentence. a sentence. But this class by itself is? Not a sentence. Not a sentence. It's just a what? A fragment. fragment. Fragment means more than a word, but less than a sentence. Yeah. Those are four different kinds of fragments. Yeah. What's the fifth one? Uh, Mosuf, Mosuf Sifa. and Sifa. So... And you know what? Let me go back and write an example of each. Here, I'll write House of Allah. Here, I'll write In the Masjid. Here, I'll write But Muslims. Here, I'll write uh, that book. Here I'll write nice student. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? Or nice, no, no, too much for you. No. <laughs> Lazy student. Yeah. I like that. Okay.
Are any of these sentences? No. No. A lazy student should work harder. Yeah. Now that's a sentence. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So and so is a lazy student. Mm -hmm. That's a sentence. Yeah. But by itself, all of these are what? Fragments. Fragments. Is that much clear why I call them fragments? I need some yeses. Yeah, this much shit can be the answer to a question, um, but it's short for a bigger answer. This is a masjid. Or, for example, if somebody says, where are you? And you say the house of Allah. Mm -hmm. That's short for I am in the house of Allah, but you decided to shoot, say a part of the sentence, but everybody understood that you meant the whole thing. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Or somebody says, where are you? And you say, in the masjid. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, you're not saying in the masjid. What you're really saying is what? I am in the masjid. Yeah. What are you reading? That book. Well, yeah, the answer is that book. But what you're really saying is, I am reading that yeah. book. Sometimes we say part of a sentence, but we mean the whole thing. Yeah. I'm talking about when you don't mean the whole thing. And even if you do, that the implication is still that it was a sentence, but it's still a part of a sentence, isn't it? So you said a part of a sentence to try to represent the whole. Yeah. Right? But, so yeah, yeah. Um, some of you are saying no. I'd like to be more. But how do we remember all this each time? You don't. I keep reminding you each time. That's why I'm here. <laughs> yeah, they're they're incomplete. Don't call them sentences. Just call them fragments. Yeah. If you if you really want to call it incomplete, just incomplete statements are fragments. Yeah. Okay. Now on page thirty-two, for the first time. We are moving on from fragments and actually looking at sentences, sentences. Yeah. complete statements. Mm -hmm. That's what page 32 is about, yeah. complete statements. Now, look at the progression. First, we learned the four properties of the ism, status, yeah. number, gender, gender type. type. That was just one word. That was just one yeah. word. One word had status, number, gender, and type. Then we started taking a word and connecting it to another word in yeah. five different ways. Mm -hmm. And that, that became five. Fragments. fragments yeah. Now we know about a word, and now we know about five yeah, fragments. fragments. Now we got to take the next step, because language isn't just about words, and it's not just about fragments. Fragments. Now we got to know how to use these words and fragments to make sentences. That's why we move on to page thirty-two. Thirty-two is now for the first time we're looking at sentences themselves. Okay. Now, come back to page thirty-two. Let's go through these shortcuts again. What it's saying is the pronoun ana. Which is on page 18. You guys memorized it as huwa huma hum, hiya huma hunna, anta antuma antum, anti antuma antunna, ana nahnu. Huwa means he, huma both of them, hum means they, hiya means she, huma means both of them, hunna means them ladies, anta means you, antuma both of you, antum all of you, anti the feminine you, antuma both of you women. Antunna, you ladies, Anna, I, and Nahnu, we. This first one is saying in the Arabic language, when you see those original pronouns in different places, chances are you can already put an is or an are or an am mm -hmm. right after them. Yeah. And you'll already automatically know it's a sentence without doing much work. Oh, okay. So in Surah Al Ikhlas, you read, Qul Allahu Ahad. Do you see a pronoun? Mm -hmm. You see huwa, right? Yeah. So you don't have, and you know that huwa means he. he. Yeah. But according to the shortcut, mm -hmm. you can actually guess it's going to mean he, he is. Yeah. So the translation will be he, he is, is Allah. Allah. Mm -hmm. Huwa Ahmad, he is Ahmad. Yeah. He mm -hmm. Maryam, she is Maryam. Yeah. Ana Nu'man, I am Nu'man. Yeah. Pronouns give away the is and the am and the are. Right after them. Anta, for example, Anta Muslim, you are a Muslim. Anti Muslimatun, you are a Muslim woman. Antuma Muslimani, both of you are Muslims. Yeah. We'll make sentences later on, but I want you to know when you see a pronoun, you can put an is, am, are mm -hmm. right after, and that's an easy way to get a sentence. Is that clear? Mm I did not understand it very well with a V. Shh. 
Sheikh Noman, not a Sheikh. Um, yes. Okay, lots of yeses. Well, if you say you don't understand, that's not enough. I need to know what you don't understand. Can a pronoun ever come before an ism without breaking the chain? No, not really. Not, a, not, not an independent one. A, pro, a pronoun cannot come like that without breaking the chain. It will. The only exception to this will be when after the pronoun, there will be a fi'l. But we haven't really taken a deep dive into fi'l yet. Which is why I keep saying this is going to work many times. It's not going to work all the time. Yeah. Well, the the other the times it's not going to work is when there's a fi'l involved, and we're not there yet, right? So, but when there's isms involved and fragments involved, yeah, sure, it's going to work. It'll work. Okay. What if there's so nothing after? Yeah. Yeah. What if there's nothing after the independent pronoun? Then there's nothing after. Then there's no sentence. Then the person just said I. No, like there's a sentence like la ilaha illahu. Yeah, so look at it. La ilaha illahu. Um, except he. Illahu. Mm -hmm. If there was something more, you could have added is. There's nothing more. You don't have to add it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, let's move on to the second one. What did we learn about pointers? They're called ismul ishara. We love that word. Ismul ishara. Musharun ilay. The musharun ilay has to have al on it. Anything other than musharun ilay will give you an is. Because the musharun ilay, like I said, this microphone, that's not a sentence. If a, this table is not a sentence. This table is big, now that's a sentence. Right? You know what that means? That there's a difference between this is a table and this table. Let me put that on the screen. This is a table and this table. Which one of these is a sentence? This is a table. Yeah. And from you, you could say, well, you're both you're still talking about a table and you still said this same thing. No, you have to become sensitive to language now. This one is a sentence, yeah. and this one is a fragment. Yeah. And the fragment one is called ismulishara. And musharun, musharun ilay, right? So this one has to have al, this al table. Mm -hmm. This is the al has to be here. Yeah. This one you can't have al. Yeah, because of that. Because you want it is there. Yeah. Okay. So that's the second giveaway. When you see a pointer, and right after that there's no al, you can immediately put and is there. Some of you students have questions about dalik al kitabu la fihi. That'll be a discussion by itself, inshallah. It's coming. It's not the time yet. But this is a table, is a sentence, yeah. right? So what does hint number two say? The pointer, meaning ismul mm -hmm. followed by other than al, followed by anything other than a musharun ilay. Yeah. And the example is hadha baytun. Look, there's no al on it. Yeah. That's why you can make it into a sentence. This yes. is a house. Is that clear? Proper and common are not connected. So what do you mean if proper and common are connected? And we're not there. We're, I'm talking about the this right now. I'm not talking about proper versus common. Stay with me. So when I'm talking about number two, and your question is about number four, and when I talk about number four, your question is going to be about number five, then we're not going to have a coherent discussion, right? So I want you guys to stay focused. That's what, I'm not just teaching you grammar. Maybe I'm teaching you focus too. Smile. Half of nasab and its ism is usually followed by is. Remember when I made a list of five fragments and yeah. I gave you examples? Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So, but Muslims, mm -hmm. lakinna al muslimina is a half of nasab, but is one of them, lakinna. Yeah. We didn't do the meanings yet, but I'm telling you, right? What I'm saying is when you see that, it'll probably mean R. If you see a half of nasab and you see its victim, like in Allah in this example, yeah. Then you can guess that it's probably the start of a sentence, mm -hmm. and what's coming after this is R. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, like in Surah Al-Asr, "Inna al-insana" will mean certainly the human being is. Mm -hmm. 
So you look at the half of Nasab, you look at its victim, then you put an is right after that. It's all that simple. Okay. Another shortcut, proper followed by common. Proper followed by common. This is Allahu Akbar. Easy example is what? Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allah, the word Allah proper, mm -hmm. the word Akbar common. Allah is greater. Whenever you have two words together, one is proper, one is common. But Ustad, you're describing Allah. No, you're you're not describing Allah with an adjective. An adjective would mean that they're, they're a fragment and all four properties match. Now don't confuse your opinion with grammar. Grammar means four properties have to match. But in Al-Kutubu Sahiratun, sure I'm describing the book, but I'm not describing it with an adjective. I'm describing it with a, a, a predicate, which is different in grammar. I Sorry I gave you that word, it'll kill you. It's not a noun adjective because it's not al-al, right? Yeah. So the books are small is not mosul sifa. Yeah. A mosul sifa cannot have an R or an is. Yeah. Only sentences can have that. Proper followed by con and then the last one is the break in the chain. Now let's go through all of these. Okay. Dalika min ayatillah. What do you think? What happened here? Where's no. the? I already drew the line, but why did I draw the line here? Can, Madiam, can you think of why? Because a min and ayat in Allah they're connected. Right. So that's why I drew a line under them. Because they're all connected. But why did I draw this line right her? Right her? Because Dalika is a pointer word? You're right. Dalika is a pointer word. But that's not enough reason to draw a line. Draw a line means that's where I want the is to be. Why do I want the is to be here? I want the is to be here because nothing is connecting these two. Yeah. Oh, okay. the, the, only way, the only way to connect, you're right, would have been an I'll right after. A mushal or there isn't, so that's going to be an is okay. right here. Mm -hmm. That is from the the signs of Allah. Okay, write that down. That is, and the is comes from here, right? From min the signs. Of Allah. Ustad? Yeah. How do we know to say that is and not like that was, for example? Because I told you the invisible there's no invisible was. Did I? Only is is invisible. Was is visible. Ghana. It's not there. Al Haqq. It's so easy when you're the solution to your problem is nothing. Don't worry, don't do it. So don't do it. Why can't I do it? Don't do it. Because you can't do it yet. You will one day. Not yet. You can't wall climb yet. Yeah. Seriously. Have you ever wall climbed? No. I did. Oh, I did. yeah. I've wall climbed before. Like, I was just like, stop. This is Florida, I think. Like, mentioning a oh, Spider-Man. Oh, you, okay. You were doing the Spider-Man now? Okay. Cool. I'm drawing a line, al haqqu min rabbikum. And I'm going to draw this line underneath here. Uh, on the last one, Maryam yeah. is asking, what's the connection between ayat and Allah? Mudaf and mudaf ilay. Light no alif lam followed by jar. Yeah. Thank you, Maryam. Min and rabbi, what's the connection? Min and rabbi. Oh, uh, mudaf and mudaf ilay? No. No way, no. Astaghfirullah, <laughs> inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Jar majroor. What about rabbikum? Rabbikum, uh, this is... This is half of jar, so... No, Rabbi is half of jar, so... No, Rabbi, not Rabbi. Not Rabbi. Kum is not a... It's from... What's Rabbi? Rabbi, oh, Rabbi is a... It's majroor. Yes. But Rabbi is also. Uh, jar. Yes. Oh, so therefore it makes the other word come uh, jar too. Mm -mm. You're forgetting something. First, always look for mudaf mudafilay first. Is it the min is a mudaf and then. Rabbi no, min can't be a mudaf. Uh, min is a harf of jar. Harf of jar can never be a mudaf. mudaf yeah. But think about the word Rabbi. Is it light and no al? Yeah. Oh, so Rabbi would be a mudaf. And then come with the mudafilay. Yes. Okay. 
Rabbikum is mudaf mudaf ilayhi. What does it mean? If min means from. Min from. Uh, from, uh, from, from. From. Rabbi is what? What does it mean? Like Lord. Master. Master. Uh, from. What from, does kum mean? From. Come. Uh, I don't know. No, I don't know. <laughs> uh, and dumb. Good. Come. It means all of you. Yes. Excellent. What does Rabbikum mean? From from your, your master. master. Excellent. To, from your master. From okay, your master. so let's write that on the side here, uh, at the bottom. From write it on the bottom side. Okay, from your way to go, guys. You're translating Quran. Yeah. From your master. Okay. Now, al haq means the truth. Mm -hmm. Okay. The truth from your master. Well, let's see. The truth. From your master is the truth? No, you go in order. Oh, you in Okay. The first word is the truth. Yeah. From? Is the word al haqqu connected to min? No. Why not? Because uh, in order... Is it a mudaf mudaf ilay? No. Is it a harf of jar? No. Is it a harf of nasib? Uh-uh. Is it a pointer? No. Is it mosul sifa? No. No connection? No. When there's no connection, I draw a straight line like that, mm -hmm. a standing line, and I put is here. The truth is from the Lord. That's where the is comes from. You understand? Mm -hmm. Now, in the third one, go up and read number one. What does it say? Independent, independent, independent pronouns, pronouns are usually followed, followed by, by is. is. Okay, now that you've read number one, an independent pronoun is usually followed by is. Uh -huh. Read this line. Ana aktharu min Just stop right there. Ana aktharu. Is uh, there an independent pronoun? Yeah. It, then it should be followed by what? Is. So what should I say? Ana is. I. I. Am. Uh, you could say I is if you like. Yeah, no, you, you shouldn't. I am more. There's more to the ayah, but we're not translating that part yet. I am more. I am more. Okay. okay. Did you see where the am came from? Yeah. This is uh, the hint number one. Okay. Right? This was hint mm -hmm. number one. This one was hint number five. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. This one, Dalika Minayatilla, was hint number two. Okay, fa, so, that uh, connects to anything anyway. There's no fa. Yeah. That's fi. Fi, yeah. But fa means so. so. It can go anywhere. It's always connected. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to translate so. Is la'alla familiar to you as a word? <laughs> Which is a harf of? Nasab. What part became nasab? Ka. Good job. Ka became nasab. What does ka mean? Ka is from uh, anta. Comes ka and you. Right. So you she? No, not she. That's oh. auntie. Oh, yeah, okay, that's, that's you. you then. Yeah. So, so may Allah uh, means maybe. So, so maybe you. Maybe you. Now, before we go any further, I want you to go up, and I want you to look at number three. Three half. Oh yeah, it is. A three. half of no. Read it. Read it. Read it. Don't. Oh yeah. Half of nasab. And its ism is usually, usually followed, followed by, by is. is. Okay. Was this a half of nasab? Yeah. Yeah. And what was its ism? Ism. Ka. Ka. Ka, yeah. That should usually be followed by? Is. Is. So maybe you are. Or. Maybe you. Or. Are. You see where the R came from? Yeah. Okay. Killing yourself. Means killing yourself. Oh. Maybe you are killing, destroying yourself. Oh, bah, nafsaka. Mm -hmm. like nafsaka is like yourself. Yourself. You see how I'm using those hints? Mm -hmm. Okay. Antum Muslimuna. Can you guys discuss with each other which hint should I use? Antum. What kind of word is antum? Pronoun. Okay. Which hint should I use? One. Number one. Yeah. So what do, what does that mean then? Antum. Uh, uh, right. So, what does Antum mean? Antum. Uh, here. Oh, Antuma. So, 
All of you. Yes. All of you. So all of you are Muslim. Excellent. That's it. What's that? Yeah. You said earlier that there's only a hidden is. So where are M and R coming from? English. You only want a hidden is? Okay. So how about this? No, it makes more sense because there's a house He is Muslim. Make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I said it's an invisible is, so I should put is everywhere then. We is, we is Muslim. She is Muslim. She is Muslim. You is Muslim. I is Muslim. I is Muslim. What you talking about? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, now, the person who asked this question, if you would like to speak this way, you're perfectly welcome to. The rest of us are going to take is and turn it into am. am when I'm talking about I in English, yeah. and you will become what? R. R. She and we will become? We are. R. Mm -hmm. Those are the other versions of is when used with certain things. That's yeah. all this. That's all that is. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I mean, you want to say all of y'all's is Muslim. I mean, you're from a certain part of this country. <laughs> That's what you is. That you is. People actually do that too. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's slang apparently nowadays. Yep. You know, what's how you? I'm a I'm a magnet for crazy people. <laughs> you just mean you like crazy. People. I meet crazy people all the time. They say the craziest things to me. So cause like they're like. So cause no, not that, not that. Where, where'd you from? This one guy came to me one time. I was giving a lecture. At the end, he came to me, man. I gotta tell you something. You, you can't no, tell nobody else, all right? I was like, I think I will. He goes, that's okay. You can tell somebody else. I was like, okay. <laughs> that that secrecy went back, back real quick. I need to tell you something about Judgment Day. I was like, let's go to the corner. <laughs> so we go down the hall. with no people. He goes, you know what I'm saying? Like, Allah says that there's going to be scrolls on Judgment Day, right? Mm -hmm. And I was looking at the DNA, and it looks like scrolls. That's the scrolls, man. It's the DNA. And I just, I'm in my head, I'm like, how do I get out of this conversation? What do I do? Just pretend your mom's calling So you I like... was like, you're right. And I ran back. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you was talking about something from Kung Fu Fantasy. I don't, I don't, yeah. The Dragon Scroll. Yeah, the Dragon Scroll. Wahuwa al-Ghafurul Wadud. Wa means and. Yeah. Because yes. It didn't turn wait, wait. Uh, Jawad has a question. Uh, in a lot of people are asking if there's a break after uh, once you find one break my dear students you don't got to look for no other break ever again there can be other breaks but they become irrelevant yeah. okay you found a break here and that was it good enough mm -hmm. okay then you don't look for another one that would be a mistake Wa means and. and. I definitely know this is not a harf of jar wa. Yeah. Because if it was, the next word should be. Jar. But hua is the independent pronoun, which yeah. is rafa, rafa, which means wa just means. Oh, and. And, yeah. and he. And. Now, which of the five hints should I use? Uh, one. Mm. Translated. And, and, he, is and he is extremely, extremely forgiving, forgiving. Extremely loving. And loving. Yeah. Extremely loving. Is it getting a little easier? Yeah. Umma of Islam, is it getting easier? My Islamic Facebookers, YouTubers, is it getting easier? Whoever thought social media could be used for studying Arabic? Seriously. <laughs> this is crazy. Hey, what do you do on Facebook? I'm studying Arabic. You're on Facebook for three hours, and next time somebody gives a khutbah, you people are on Facebook for three hours. Well, yeah, alhamdulillah. It's so Islamic. I'm so Islamic on Facebook. Mashallah, you're on Facebook. Mashallah, mashallah, you're on Facebook. We're changing things. Yeah. We're shaking up the system. Yeah. Mark Zuber. Mark, I can't pronounce Mark it. Zuber, um, Mark, Mark Zuber was like, this is, um, I need to find some way of banning this. Um, <laughs> some congressional hearing. Yeah. In that, his, his algorithms are probably watching this right now. Hey, Mark. It's a half of Nassim. Okay, in the hadith. <laughs> 
Inna hadhihi tadhkiratun. Find which hint to use. Wait, which one are we on? Uh, bottom one. Oh, inna hadhihi. Inna, it comes from uh, nasab. Inna anna. So, inna. So, which hint from the one to five? Uh, the, 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 uh, three, harf of nasab. Read that carefully. What harf is it? Harf of nasab and its ism is usually followed by is. So, what's the ism of the harf of nasab in this, in this ayah? Hadhihi. Yes. So, hadhihi means this. This. So how do you translate inna hadhihi? Uh, this. What does inna mean? Uh, inna. For sure. For sure, this is. Good. For sure, this is a powerful reminder. For sure, this is a powerful reminder. I need about maybe 15 minutes, Josh. November 2nd okay. is when all this is coming. And then six weeks from then? They're going to go faster. Okay. That's just the block time. Okay. For sure, this is a... For sure, this is a powerful reminder. I just got told our, our elevator is getting delivered on November 2nd. Anyway, go ahead, Jawad. Going back to... Okay. Uh, a lot of questions on why this isn't Mosul Sifa. Okay, I want to answer that, and I also don't want to answer that right now. Okay, I'll answer it, but... Okay. I'll answer it without any follow-up questions. So if you get it, you get it. If you don't get it, just say, Alhamdulillah, Allah, Allah will make this easy for me later on, because Ustad will teach this in detail later on. But some of you have that itch, so I will scratch it right now. Okay? Sometimes I will qualify a, sense, a statement by saying... I will not accept follow-up questions on this. That means you're going to get distracted from the real subject matter if you get caught up in that. Mm -hmm. But even though I will deal with that in great detail later, just you need to trust me, things that are not very clear right now are things I'm not keeping very clear right now. You didn't just It didn't just occur to you, and it has never occurred to me in the last 20 years. It has. It's just got a later time for it. So when I keep saying, I know it's annoying when I say trust me or I say later, I just give you one-word answer. Just trust me. It's there. It's a whole chapter dedicated just to this. Okay? So we have we it, it's it's gonna get covered. But let me just tell you something. When it comes to Allah, mm -hmm. we're, we're not talking about grammar now, we're talking about Quran. Yeah. Quran's language is using Arabic, but Quran has its own style, right? Yeah. So we're talking about Quran now. Yeah. Allah has many names, right? Mm -hmm. So one, some of his names are Al Ghafur and Al Wadud. Al -Wadud. Mm -hmm. So far so good? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now when you see Allah mentioned, mm -hmm. and then you see the names of Allah matching in the four properties. Do they match right now? Yeah. 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 Proper, proper, proper. We can say Allahu, Allahu al-Ghafuru al-Wadudu. Then you can say this is Mosuf, this is Sifa number one, this is Sifa number two. So far so good? Yeah. Okay. Now. If I say غفورٌ ودودٌ If I did that mm -hmm. They're no longer مصوف صفة to Allah Because the word Allah is proper And these two are what? Common Common, so they're not mm -hmm. But what if the word Allah wasn't there? Oh, this would be This still looks like مصوف and صفة. صفة Let me just remind you this Tell you this We won't discuss it But I'm telling you if you see Allah's names, mm -hmm. but you don't see the word Allah, and they're not matching with the word Allah. Mm -hmm. Two things. They're not with the word Allah, and they're not matching with the word Allah. Then they are not called noun adjective, even when they look like noun adjective. They are another kind of grammar that you are not familiar with yet. That's a later study. Yeah, so we put okay. in our notes yesterday. Right. So the names of Allah, when they match in properties... Unless you see Allah's name there. If this was, وَهُوَ اللَّهُ الْغَفُورُ الْوَدُودِ mm -hmm. Then I could say the word Allah is Mosuf, al ghafur is Sifa, al wadud is Sifa number two. Mm -hmm. But I don't see the word Allah here. Yeah. So I, even though these guys match, I will not call them Mosuf Sifa. Okay? So no more questions about that, but that's for your information. Okay. Other questions?
If not, alhamdulillah, get it. Somebody's asking how big the poster board can be if there's a max size. Bigger than your face. Make it as big as you want. Just to destroy your home. Take up a whole wall. Oh, it doesn't matter. What? Let's try this. What happened? What? Let's try this. It's like I'm banned. Okay, I'm going to move over by you. No, you don't have to move over. It's okay. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Oh, no, you got banned. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Um, so, alhamdulillah. Should I use number one? No. Why not? Because it's not an independent pronoun. Okay, I've fine. Uh, should I use number two? Uh, no. Because it's not a pointer. Okay. Should I use number three? No, because it's not nasab. Or half of nasab. So far, I can't use number one, yeah. number two, or three. number three. You can use four, though. Let's see. Proper followed by common. Well, it is proper. Uh -huh. But the word Allah after it is common? No, it's not. I can't oh, use number four. You can't use it. A break in the chain. Well, let's see what break in the chain means. Break in the chain means you have a few words. Mm -hmm. And are they a fragment? Mm -hmm. Each fragment is a kind of chain. So a jar is chained to a majroor. A mudaf is chained to a mudaf filay. A harf of nasab is chained to its victim. Uh, a mausuf is chained to its sifa. And ismul lishara is chained to a musharun ilay. Is li, li chained to the word Allah? Yes. Yeah. Jar majroor. But is alhamdu chained? There's five kinds of chains. Mm -hmm. Is alhamdu chained to lillahi in any way? No. So there's a break in the chain. Mm -hmm. Therefore... This Oh. When there's a break, wherever there's a break in the chain, you put is. You put is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Praise and thanks yeah. is for Allah. What has happened? Oh, that's really cool too. I've been teaching a long time. Let me tell you, students are in a rush to learn everything, but when you drop too much on them, they say slow down. <laughs> I know. Okay? Yeah. Ana Rabbuka. Ana Rabbuka. Which one should I use? Number one, two, three, four, or five? Uh, independent. Number one. Yeah, Mariam, help me with this translation. Um, um, what does Tanaka mean, Tanaka? What does Anna mean? <laughs> no, wait, which one are we Number on? Number 10. Oh, okay, I thought we were on. Okay, Anna. <laughs> um, Needs a little better. Oh, you're good, you're good, you're good. <laughs> the weapon of doom. Oh, you go? go ahead. Number one, <laughs> Number 10. Uh, Number 10, okay. Um, so the first one, so independent pronoun. Oh, Anna, okay. It means we. <laughs> <laughs> That's an axe. No. That's Wait, an axe Anna. Oh, no, it means I. Yeah, it means yes, I. Yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> Go ahead, translate it. Um, I is my master. I is. Good translation. <laughs> I'm gonna, it's official. I is my master. <laughs> Well, Rabbuka, how is that my master? Help me understand. Where's the my? What does ka mean? Oh, ka means you. So, my master? I is you, my master? I, <laughs> I is you. <laughs> That's deep. I is you. <laughs> okay, let's take a step back, buddy. Look at this. Look at this kiddo. <laughs> <laughs> Rabbi's master? Yeah. Kam means you. What is look look at the screen? Look at the screen. What does Rabbuka mean? Um He is my master. No no no. Don't you're looking you said look um, at the screen. Look at the screen. Just do it. Just look at it. Okay. Okay. Ka comes from You or Anta. Ka, Anta. You. Yeah, you Rab means. Master. Master. They're mudafil mudafile, right? Uh -huh. What goes between mudaf mudafile? Is. 
Really? Mudaf of, of? Uh-huh. So put of there and say it. Allah of he? No, there's, I don't see the word Allah. <laughs> oh, master. You see the word Allah? <laughs> master of he. Master, master of who? Master of he. Okay, so the ka means he now? Because you said it oh, was you. Oh, no. <laughs> master of you. Are you seeing something I don't see? You know why that's happening? Because you're not looking at the screen, but yeah. You're too busy about him laughing at you and you're scrambling your brain. You go stand over there for a minute. Let me just help buddy out. Don't look at us. Don't look at us. <laughs> Stop laughing. You're making me laugh even more. Yes. Sit behind that couch so we don't see you. Good. Good. Okay, and don't be loud. Okay. Now. Ka means you. Yeah. Rabbu Ka means you've done this a bajillion times, so I know you know it. Master of you. Which means in simple English. Ma uh -huh. Who says master of you? Nobody says that. You are my master. Your. Oh, your master. Your master. You can't use R or my. There's no my here. There's no R here. So you just have to say what? Your, your master. master. Now co come back to the example. Ana. It means I. And in the in number one, it says independent pronouns are usually followed by is. So the ana part will mean what? Is, I am. Oh, I am. I am. Not I is. It will be. I am. I am. And then Rabbuka you already translated. What is Rabbuka? I am um, master of he. Master of? His. Not his. Guy's not his. Oh, master of you. Yes, which is your master. Mm -hmm. I am your, your master. master. This is what Allah said to oh, Musa. Okay. <laughs> Ana rabbuka. I is you. Come back, Ahmed. <laughs> you just got to slow it down and you'll get it. I know you know it. I, I You've demonstrated that you know it already. I am your master. And you probably didn't want to say that because it sounds weird. But it's a quote from the Quran. This is what Allah said to Musa on the mountain. Inni ana rabbuka alayk. I'm your master. Take your shoes off. That was an amazing ayah. I love that ayah. You missed that story night, didn't you? The yeah, take your we, shoes off one? Yeah, we missed the Yusuf, yeah. No, the... the oh, the, the take your shoes? The take your shoes off one. Take your, I don't even remember. Wait, what year did you do that? Before coronavirus, um, guys. Was it before? It wasn't like September. I I don't I don't even know what month it is now. I I'm not good with calendars. I think we, it was the story of Musa, right? You did the story of Musa. I did the story of Musa. I sent three times, three different episodes. Yeah, no, we we went to like I think one of them. Of no, one of them. You missed two. Yeah, I missed you. I missed you in the audience. I knew you weren't there. I'm usually in front. Yes. Yeah, you always send the front. Okay. Which one am I going to use? In Dalika Isa Maryam? Pointer. Two. Okay. So? Dalika. Uh, read the pointer thing. Dalika Isa. No, read the pointer thing. The number oh, two. Pointer word followed by another al. By other, by other than, than. By other. Wait, followed by other than al. Okay. Is this pointer word followed by other than al? Uh, <laughs> Is it pointer no. word followed by other than al? No. No. So it does have al? No, it doesn't. So it is other than al. Yeah, okay. Which it means there should be. Is. So what does dalika mean? Dalika means. Uh, Hada means this. Hada. Dalika means. That. that. Thank you. That, that is Isa. Isa. And Ibnu is a mudaf. Mudaf. And, and, and Maryama, Maryama is non Arab. So the uh, Maryamu, Maryama, Maryama. 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 So Ibn Maryam is actually a mudaf mudafile, the yeah. son of Maryam. That is Jesus, the son of Mary. That is Isa, the son of Maryam. Such an epic statement. Yeah. Allah tells us the story of how he was born, and then he said, and then how what he said when he was a baby, and then said, "Dalika Isa ibn Maryam." That is Isa, the son of Maryam. As if to say, all the other stories are your own made-up stories. That's who he really is. That's how Allah drops it sometimes in the Quran. Yeah. It's like a dropping a sledgehammer. Surat Maryam. Thalika Isa ibn Maryam. Qawla al haqq alladhi fihi yamtaroon. Oh man, I gotta share something from the Quran with you now. We brought it up and it. Yeah. You know, one of the most powerful things about the Quran, because the Quran has different styles, right? Yeah. yeah. There's lots of different styles in the Quran. And one of the most powerful things about the Quran is the way that it rhymes, mm -hmm. yeah. right? But rhymes, you know, in music and in poetry and things like that, 
rhymes are about, you know, hat, cat, bat, rat. Yeah. You know, but rhymes in the Quran do something else. So I'm going to show you something. Kaf ha ya ain sad, the kuru rahmati rabbika abdahu zakariya. If nada rabbahu nida and khafiya. Kala rabbi inni wa hanal avmu minni wa shta ala rasu shayban wa lam akum bidua ika rabbi shakiya. What did you see the ending words rhyme? Yeah. Zakariya, khafiya, shakiya, waliya, radiya, samiya, itiya. Shay'a, sawiyya, ashiyya, taqiyya, asiyya, hayya, sharqiyya, sawiyya, taqiyya, zakiyya, baghiyya, maqdiyya, qasiyya, bansiyya, sariyya, jeniyya, insiyya, fariyya. Do you notice this keeps going? Mm -hmm. Okay. Baghiyya, sabiyya. Nabiya, Hayya, Shakiya, Hayya, Yam Tarun, Kun Fayakun, Siratum Mustakim, Azim, Mashadi Yomin Azim, Fibalalim Mubin, Umla Yuminun, Wailena Yurjaun. وَذْكُرْ فِي الْكِتَابِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ إِنَّهُ كَانَ صِدِّيقًا نَبِيًّا Back to what? Yeah. Asad, can you mention the surah number? Surah Maryam. Almost all of it. شَيْئَا سَوِيَّا عَصِيَّا وَلِيَّا مَلِيَّا حَفِيَّا شَقِيَّا نَبِيَّا عَلِيَّا نَبِيَّا نَجِيَّا نَبِيَّا نَبِيَّا مَرْضِيَّا Nabiya Aliya. My God. So much rhyme. But it broke. Yeah. In the middle, it broke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. There's a whole study in the Quran. Why does the rhyme break? Oh, okay. Surah Maryam tells us many stories of prophets. Mm -hmm. And it starts with the story of Zakariya. And Zakariya was very old and he was praying to Allah that I have no one who will take over the masjid when I'm dead. And all the people around me are not qualified to run this place. Yeah, yeah Allah, just give me someone who can inherit. Because he was a prophet and he saw people around him were corrupt. Yeah. yeah, Allah, give me someone who I can pass this on to. Yeah. I'm almost dead. My hair has turned, it's like my hair's turned into ash. Like, you know, when fire burns it out and ash is left, yeah. he describes his hair as burnt out and ash is left as it. As it, you know, fire takes everything, life out of something. Mm -hmm. My old age has taken the life out of me, is what he says, right? My hair's have turned gray, ya Allah. It's, it's time for me to go, but there's no one left behind here. I'm worried about them. You know, so he makes his angel show up and say, You're going to have a child. Imagine your great great grandpa having a child. Right? So imagine a hundred year old man having a child. He's like, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you know I'm, I'm already an old man. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> same rhyme. Yeah. Allah gave him the son, uh, Yahya. Yeah, yeah. Yahya alayhi is born. So it's a miracle birth. Mm -hmm. Right? And then Allah describes Maryam. Mm -hmm. He starts, changes the subject to Maryam. And angels come to her and give her a miracle baby, yeah. Jesus, Jesus yeah. right? So Allah is building up. Allah is saying, well, first, if you think that Jesus is God because he's a miracle baby, well, right before that miracle baby, there was already another miracle baby, which is yeah, the yeah, son yeah. of Zechariah. And now Isa alayhi salam. Mm -hmm. Why is Allah making this point? Because Allah wants you to understand that to believe in one God, you cannot believe that Jesus has a, or oh, Jesus is the son of God. Right. He's just the son of a human being. Christians and Jews would also say that they're also the religion of Abraham. They call them Abrahamic faiths. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So Allah decided to do something. The moment he got to Jesus and how he was born and how he was born with a miracle. Right? That's the story here in this surah. He said this. So everything was rhyming, right? Yeah. And all of a sudden Allah broke the rhymes. And he said... ذَلِكَ عِيسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمَ قَوْلَ الْحَقِّ الَّذِي فِيهِ يَمْتَرُونَ That 
is Jesus, the son of Mary, the word of truth in which they have doubt. It's not becoming for Allah to take any son. How per- He's way too perfect for that. Whenever he makes a decision, all he says is be, and it happens. Yeah. And certainly Allah is my master and your master. So worship him alone. This is a straight path. The, di- the different groups disagreed among each other. So the worst punishments will fall on the disbelievers on the on the on the site of a great day, meaning judgment day, they'll see the disagreements they made. How how well they're gonna hear that day and how well they're gonna see that day. Like right now, they they don't want to hear anything and they don't want to see all the evidence, but they're gonna have perfect vision on that day, the day on which they come to us. However, the wrongdoers on that day are going to be are, are right now. Today they are in open or clearly misguided. Warn them on the day that's going to be filled with regret. They're going to regret they didn't listen to this. They're going to regret they worship Jesus. When the decision will have already been made. And they're going to be completely oblivious, like no clueless, and as they don't as they refuse to believe. We are the one who will inherit the earth. We and, and whoever's on it. And to us alone do you have to go back. You're not going to go back to Jesus. Jesus is going to inherit the earth. I will inherit the earth. I alone will inherit the earth. Now that you understand that, you need to understand you don't really follow the religion of Ibrahim. So now you're ready for the story of Ibrahim. Nabiya rhyme again. Yeah. Allah broke the rhyme to talk about Jesus. And as if to say, I'm telling you the story of Zakaria, then I'm going to tell you the story of Mary, but y'all are confused about Jesus. I'm going to break the rhyme. And when someone's listening to rhyme and rhyme and rhyme, and then it breaks, they're like, oh, what just happened? Yeah. Because Allah says, I need you to focus on this. Mm-hmm. I'm going to break the rhyme. Yeah. And now that you understand this, now we can go back to the mm-hmm. continuing with the stories of prophets. Mm-hmm. And so, So even if you don't know Arabic and you're listening to the Quran, you can tell Allah just changed the subject. Mm-hmm. Something happened. Yeah. He changed. In, in English, you change subjects by changing a paragraph. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Double space. But if you're listening to someone talk yeah. or an audio book, mm-hmm. can you tell the paragraph changed? No. No. Quran, you can. Mm-hmm. You see the, the un and in, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Does it stay like that? No. What happens next? Alam. Alam naj'alil arba mihada wal jibala awtada wa khalaqnakum azwaja wa ja'alna nawmakum subata wa ja'alna al-layla libasa wa ja'alna an-nahara ma'asha wa banayna fawqakum sab'an shidada wa ja'alna sirajan wahaja وَأَنزَلْنَا مِنَ الْمُعْصِرَاتِ مَاءً ثَجَّاجًا لِنُخْرِجَ بِهِ حَبًّا وَنَبَاتًا وَجَنَّاتٍ أَلْفَافًا إِنَّ يَوْمَ الْفَصْلِ كَانَ مِيقَاتًا You see how it changed? Yeah. You know, you, even if you don't know, when you read the translation, you'll see the top was different. Yeah. And then the subject has changed. Mm-hmm. And subject change, you can tell by what? The rhyme changed. Yeah. Even the rhyme changed, right? Mm-hmm. So it's an, it's an incredible thing to even pay attention to how ayat are placed. Like yeah. when, I, when we did this example, Valika Isa ibn Maryam, I just remembered how musically rhythmic yeah. Surat Maryam is, and Allah purposely breaks it with Jesus. Mm-hmm. Like you need to understand this especially. It's super stuff. You know, there was a there was a um, 
professor mm -hmm. that I met, non-Muslim, who became Muslim, but kind of a weird Muslim, mm -hmm. doesn't really pray, still drinks alcohol, but all kinds of bad stuff, but still believes in Islam to be true. Yeah. And I was like, you do all this stuff. So, I mean, and you have all these weird ideas. Why are you still Muslim? You know what he said to me in his posh British accent? Yeah. Well, when I listen to the Quran, I can't help but believe it's divine, isn't it? And I was like, you're right. <laughs> he did it with just, like, the eyebrow thing. Too. No, he did. Yeah, he did the. He might as well have had a monocle in his mouth, but okay. even though Quraysh couldn't hear it and not not realize that it's divine, yeah. if you just listen to Quran, you listen to yourself recite Quran, mm -hmm. it starts. There's a feeling that starts coming over you. Yeah. You have to recite Quran with your heart. We're doing this so we can feel Quran when we recite it. Mm -hmm. Man, nothing like it. Okay, let's get back to work. Wa ilahukum ilahu wahid. Okay, ilahukum ilahun wahid. Mariam, you struggled with the mudaf mudafilay last time, so I'll help. help uh, I'll solicit Ahmed's help this time, and you pay close attention to it. Okay. okay. Ilahukum is a mudaf and a mudaf ilay. Okay. Ilahu is light. No alif lam. Kum is an attached pronoun. Kum means good. All of you. Ilah means God. The God of all of you. The God of all of you. Now, I want to know if this mudaf mudaf ilay. All I care about is is this proper or common? Uh, this is. Well, if the mudaf mudaf can only be proper if the mudaf ilay is proper. Is it? Yeah. A pronoun is always proper. proper. So this whole thing is what? Proper. Proper. And then ilahun wahidun is a mausuf sifa, a single God. Mm -hmm. Okay, the four properties match, and this is common. Now go back up in your, in your hints. Mm -hmm. What does it say? Proper followed by common. Proper followed by common has an is in between. Yeah. The God of all of you is a single God. The God of all of you. Or your God is one God. You can make it easier. Your God is one God. Ilahukum ilahun wahid. The God of all you is the only God? Is one God. Wahid means one. So ilahun wahid is mausuf sifa. Okay. Numbers many times come as adjectives. Inna ya juja wa ma juja. Gog and magog. That's a yeah. biblical name for them. Uh, inna is a harf of nasab. And what did I say about wa? And it can carry the effect over. So ya juja became nasab. And ma'juja also became yes. nasab. So that's all one big fragment and it's connected with the and. So we'll think of it as one big fragment. So the, the victim of inna here is basically the whole thing. Ya'juja wa ma'juja. Okay. So certainly ya'juj and ma'juj. Is there a hint up, up there? Yeah. Harf of nasab and atism usually followed by is. Mm. Certainly ya'juj and ma'juj are, are. are making trouble. In the land. Questions? There's a question about in uh, I think when you went over it, you used hint three, and people are asking if you could also use hint two. You can. Multiple ones work. Three and two work. In What is three? Uh, in nine victim, right? And what is two? Pointer without al. Yeah, they both work. And in fact, you can use five too. Once you get good at this, you'll see multiple at the same time. Things are going to be fast paced from here on. Okay. So today I spent a lot of time on just sentences. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is as much as I need you to know. If you understand these examples, exactly where I need you to be. If you don't understand other examples from the Quran, that's exactly where I need you to be confused. That's exactly what I want right now. But what I need you to do for the next three days, day eight, day nine, and day ten, is I need you guys to bring your A game. I need you guys to get some good rest, get early sleep, whatever you got to do, but I need one million percent tomorrow, day after, and day after. In fact, I'm not even going to take questions tomorrow. We're just going to do class tomorrow. So we're not, you know how we start with review and questions and things like that? No questions today. 
Today, everybody's focused on the same thing. I want everybody studying, reviewing page 33. And we practice, we, we solve the solutions on page 34. We have already done it the first time we did this course. Yeah. I need you to re-memorize page 33. Mm -hmm. I need you to know every word and what it means mm -hmm. on page 33. Yeah. And then I need you to go over yourselves, page 34, and see how we got the answers that we got. Okay. That is your assignment today because I need that from you for tomorrow. Tomorrow there's no review. There's no other questions. If you have other questions, you will put them in a fridge. We'll deal with them later. But this is the goal for 8, 9, and 10. These are not – usually when you get to the end of a course – things slow down. Yeah. For us, things are now going to speed up. Not speed up, but they're going to intensify. I'm not going to teach you more material, but I need to really have you master your fi'il work. And the only way I can do that is if you come prepared. So, you know, uh, I think there's an audio recording for Huwa Nasara, is there? I think, yeah, I think you did one. Right? Jawad? There is not. There isn't one? Okay, no. I'll send you a voice note right after class. Let's see okay. if we can get it uploaded. Um, on the new website, I don't have access to that yet. Okay, wherever you get it uploaded, send me the link, and I will put it on my Facebook page. Okay. Okay. So then people have access immediately. Yeah. But if you, if even if you don't have access, the recordings are there from the last time we did the pre the past tense. Mm -hmm. So go over that, and I really, really need you to 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 own that as much as you possibly can before tomorrow. Okay. So do that out loud. Don't do that in your head. Don't do. This is not tasbih after salah. This is huwa nasara, huma nasara, hum nasaru, hiya nasarat, huma nasarata, hunna nasarna, anta nasarta, antuma nasartuma, antum nasartum, anti nasarti, antuma nasartuma, antunna nasartunna, ana nasartu, nahnu nasarna. So that's what we'll do tomorrow. I'll give you kids an early break today and I'll stick around an extra 19 minutes to go until 12.30. Uh, maybe even a little longer for any questions you have for the material up until now. So I'll just do that, but you guys can enjoy your break. So, good job today, guys. I will, inshallah, memorize this like it's a brick in my hand, and I won't ever let go of it. Okay. What? That, a, said. that was a weird saying. That was okay. weird saying, yeah. But I'll, I'll break it. Okay, it's not a t-shirt. I'll put it on sock. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's not t-shirt material. Yeah, it's not t-shirt. Like, when the dog says it like that. All righty. How come we said in, or how come uh, in in the example it's inna yajuja wa majuja mufsiduna instead of mufsidani? Because they're the name of a nation, so they're the word yajuja and majuja are substitute for the word qawm. Inna haula il qawm mufsiduna fil ard. So the name is not of two people, but is of an entire nation, and the nation is treated qawm and qawm is treated plural. That's why. Somebody's asking if we can go over min qablu again. Uh, certainly. Uh, qabl and tahat and fawq and ba'd, these are on page 22 in your notes. I'll open that for you. Um, so page 22, they're called special mudafs, right? Let me tell you something more about them now since you're asking over again. So those of you that have already understood it will learn something new too. Um, these words are, they're called, the, the Arabic word for them is actually dharf. With the exception of the bottom row where I put uh, X's on them last time. They're called Dharf. Um, D H A R F. And what that means basically is these are words for time and space. These are words for time and space. So besides, between, above, below, before, after, around, with, these are all words for location or some kind of time. So they're temporal in nature or spatial in nature, right? So these, these words, when they occur as mudaf, because they occur only as mudaf, actually. So uh, let me show you again. I'll draw the line just so everybody's clear. Um, the words above this line are always supposed to be mudaf. The words below sometimes can be not mudaf too. That's okay. And they're not time and space. Notice which or other or every and all. These are not words for time and space. But the words above it are all words for time and space. 
So this box right here, this stuff right here, this is uh, words that definitely demand that they should be treated as a mudaf and therefore they should have a mudafile. But in Arabic, sometimes we say these words without mentioning their mudafile. When you don't mention their mudafile, the speaker is trying to tell you, the one who said it is trying to tell you either that the mudafile is too obvious, so it doesn't even have to be said, uh, or they want you to really think about and figure out what that mudafile should be that you should come up with yourself. So it's demanding, it's putting a demand on the on the listener from the speaker, you know. And when that happens, when you remove the mudaf ilay from being mentioned, then the this word's way of telling you that there was supposed to be a mudaf ilay here, but it's been removed. Its way of telling you that is that it becomes non-flexible. You see, the nasab version of it is qabla. The jar version, if there's a harf of jar before it, would be qabli. Right? Technically, you wouldn't have the Rafa version because the word before is never going to be a doer. So you're not really going to have the Rafa version practically. Look at what they mean. They can't be doers. Right? And, you know, their default position is to be a detail of something. Where did something happen? When did something happen? Those are always details. That's why they're in Nasab like that. Now, it's not a grammar thing, it's a common sense thing. They just happen to be details all the time. That's why they're nasab all the time. But sometimes they're beat up by a harf of jar, so they, they can become jar too. But rafa just never happens. It just never happens. But what happens, the problem is, when you don't give them a mudafile, then duna can become dunu, tahta becomes tahtu, fauqa becomes fauku, meaning whether it's nasab or jar, it'll still be fauku. If you didn't mention the mudafile, whether it's nasab or jar, it will still be qablu, even if you didn't mention the mudafile. Now, in the Quran, you find inna kunna. Um, let me show you the ayah. Uh, yep, I, I thought I thought right. So number. Surah Tur, Surah number 52. I'll open it up and I'll show it to you. Tur. Let it load up. Look at this. I'll, I'll enlarge it. This is ayah number 26. Yeah, 50, Surah 52, ayah 26. Inna kunna, we were before this, before before is the word qabl, but it was going to be qabli hadha or qabla hadha, before this. But the mudafile is not mentioned. When the mudafile is not mentioned, this word becomes non flexible, stuck with the u. The U has nothing to do with Rafa on this word. The U has to do with the fact that it's the U is letting you know that a mudafile was taken away. That's all it does. So as you're at grammar advanced, at the basic level, these sounds are for Rafa and Nasab and Jar. Then you're going to learn some more. Oh, these sounds do some other things for some other special word sometimes. So they're they're done, they, they are more versatile. It's like someone has a full-time job and I've got a bunch of part-time jobs. This is one of the part-time jobs of the Dhamma sound. This time it's not rafa at all. Okay? It's not rafa at all. It's just serving another purpose. Okay? And that's you're going to have to expand your mind about these sounds later on. At the basic level, I just need you to get recognition. Rafa and subjar. This sound, this sound, this sound. But as we advance, we're going to start seeing that. Which is why I didn't spend time discussing this yet because I want you to develop that thoroughly when the time comes for it. So that's the qablu thing. Other questions? Yeah, um, <clears throat> two questions in Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. The first one is, can you explain the break? And the second one is, when we're talking about the word Rabbi, we said reasons for Jar are two, Mudaf Ilay and uh, Jar Majuru. Then how come Rabbi is Jar here? Uh, so I can explain Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen and the break and I'll have you repeat that second question because I didn't quite get what they were trying to ask. Uh, 
Sure. But at least the first question, let's let's dig into that a little bit. Where did it go? I don't know why it keeps disappearing. Anyway, so Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. So, Li is a harf of Jar, and the word Allah clearly became Jar as a result. So, that would be a Jar Majroor. So, that's pretty, that's a connection, one of the five. The word Allah is Jar, and you notice the word Rabbi is Jar, which is already kind of starting to give you a hint there. It's trying to match with the word Allah. And if you dig deeper, the four properties of the word Allah will match with the four properties of the word Rabbi based on Rabbil Alameen. Which means that the, the word Allah and Rabbil Alameen are connected as a noun adjective. Even when inside that noun adjective, Rabbil Alameen is a mudaf and a mudaf in it. So there's a jar and a majroor, there's a mudaf and a there's a inside here there's a mudaf and a mudaf and there's a mosuf and a sifa. All that stuff is going on. So there's a bunch of connections here. There's no break in the chain. When I say break in the chain, that's terminology I'm using to describe the connection between the, the components of a fragment. So a mudaf is chained to a mudaf A mosuf is chained to a sifa. A nismul ishara is chained to a musharun ilay. They have an impact on each other. They're connected to each other, forming a fragment together. The word, the word alhamdu, however, it cannot be a mudaf because it has al, so that's gone. It is not affected by a harf of jar or a harf of nasab. Those have to come in the beginning anyway. They can't be after. It's not dealing with a pointing word, so that's not. It's not a pointing fragment. And even if it did have a pointer, you can't connect the pointer after. You can you connect the pointer before. And then if there, this was a situation of noun adjective, well, it's clearly rafa, and there's nothing after that's rafa. So there's no match with anything. Then what I get to the conclusion that this is not forming a fragment of any kind, it's not chained to anything. Li was chained with Allah. Rabbi was chained with Al-Alameen. Allah, he was chained with Rabbi Al-Alameen. There were chains, chains, chains. But with Alhamdu, there was no chain. There, there, was no, there was a break. And that's why the is happened here. Alhamdu is Lillahi Rabbil Alameen. Now that's pretty, I mean, I, it, was, it was a mouthful what I just said, but with enough experience, this will just be second nature. You'll just be, oh yeah, of course, that's what it means. You know, it'll just start happening for you, but it'll take time to get there. Okay. The second part was when we talked about the reasons for Jar, we said two reasons, Mudaf Ilay and Jar Majuru. So, What's the reason for Rabbi being Jar here? Rabbi is Jar because it's being it's serving as an adjective um, for the word Allah. And Rabbi has to be looked at together with the Idafa, but really it's Jar because it needs to be matching with the word Allah to be an adjective, to be a Sifa. So yeah, we said two reasons to be Jar. Mudaf Mudafile or Mudafile or Harf of Jar. But a reason that's not specific to this. If the word Allah was Rafa and you wanted to match with it, then Rabb would be Rabbu. If the word Allah was Nasib and you wanted to match it with it, it would be Rabba. It's not a reason to be Jar, it's the reason to match. Matching is a separate concept. So it's not Jar for a particular reason, it's matching for a particular reason. Right? So uh, uh, when you want to be an adjective, you'll match Rafa with Rafa, Nasib with Nasib, Jar with Jar. Okay. Another question we have is Yes, you can leave. Um, in the example or in Surah Al Fajr, there's the ayah Hal fi dhalika qasamun li the hijr. How come qasamun is rafa' here instead of jar? Because it comes after fi dhalika. Hal fi dhalika qasamun. And the question is why rafa'? Right? What does fi do? It makes the next word jar. So dhalika would be jar. Dhalika is non-flexible, so the raf and usab jar versions look the same. But I know for a fact because of fi that it's jar. Now, the, the real question to ask is, is qasamun a musharun ilay? Is qasamun a musharun ilay? Musharun ilay means it's immediately after the pointer and it's got an al on it. Does it? No. If it did have an al, it would have to match. If it doesn't have an al, it doesn't have to match, and that's your that's your answer. It's not a musharun ilay. 
That's why it's not an, it's not jar. If it was fi dalika al, it would be incomplete in that case. But if it was dalika al qasam, there would be more to the sentence then. But it would be fi dalika al qasami. But it's not. It's hal fi dalika qasamun because it's not a musharrani lay. That's why it doesn't match. Okay, uh, when we're talking about the attached pronoun ya, yeah, meaning ana, like in the example of rabbi, uh, then hmm, the status of rab is what they're asking about. Okay, let me show all of you guys. Those of you that are here, give me 100%. Uh, let me change the font first because this one bothers me. Okay, that's nicer. Rabbuka, uh, Rabbaka, and Rabbika. Everybody should be able to tell that Rabbu was Rafa over here. Rabba was Nasab over here. And Rabbi was Jar over here. The Mudaf could be Rafa or Nasab or Jar. The Mudaf ilay, the Ka is always Jar, right? But the mudaf could be any one of them, depending on what the speaker wants to say. Now, when I add rabbi, the e, which means my master, is so powerful that it takes the ability of the mudaf to show its status. I I don't I can't I can't say rabbi, rabbi. And then Rabbi, the word Rab, once you what any word, once you add e on it, that last letter like Kitabi, right? The word the ba on Kitab is no longer able to show you whether it was Rafa or Nasab or Jar. It got consumed by the e, so I will not be able to tell if Kitab in Kitabi is Rafa or Nasab or Jar. And here I will not be able to tell if Rab in Rabbi is Rafa or Nasab or Jar. Unless I look for other grammar clues. For example, let's take one of these. Because I don't know which... The rub in Rabbi could be Rafa Nasab or Jad, is what I'm saying. So if I said Inna Rabbi, then I know for a fact that the word Rabb is Nasab because there's Inna before it. But if I said Fi Rabbi, then I know for a fact that the Rabb is Jar because there's a Fi before it. And if there was nothing before it, it was the start of a sentence, for example, then it has no reason to be nasab or jar, then I would know that the word rab is rafa, the default. The e part is always jar. It's the first part that I'm talking about. Yeah, it becomes impossible to discover what it is. You don't change it. The rafa version of rabbi is rabbi, the nasab is rabbi, the jar is rabbi. Compare that to rabbuka and rabbaka and rabbika, you see how they're clearly distinct from each other. Okay? There's still, uh, there's been a repeat question over the last like week on the second ayah of Surah Al-Baqarah, Dalik Al-Kitab, and why it's translated the way it is. Really don't want to answer that one. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, the, 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 here's a reason I don't want to answer that one, because you're not at that level yet. You're, maybe you are, but I haven't taught you to that level yet. Dhalik uh, al-kitabu la riba fihi Can be looked at grammatically six different ways That is a complex grammatical ayah That can be looked at six different ways And I want to be able to share that with you properly But I need to, to get you there first um, What I'm teaching you right now is the very basic level And then above that we're going to build Some very sophisticated understanding of how the Structures come together and the same things that I'm teaching you right now that you looked at one way, you're going to look at those same things another way later on. So you have to be patient with me right now. And not, I can give you a quick answer, but it'll only create more confusion. But if I've taught this to you properly, and then I share the answer with you, it'll stay with you for life, inshallah. So just be patient with me. And I know it looks like a fragment, and many translators translate it as a sentence. Right? The ayah in Baqarah says, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ which translates that book. And many translations say, this is the book in which there is no doubt. 
I'm not arguing that that's a mistranslation. Actually, there's a way to look at it as a proper translation too, but we have to get there first. We have to get you there first, inshallah. Okay, a number of students are saying there's another um, sentence that we didn't go over at the top of page 33, but I'm not seeing anything there. Oh, really? So I don't know. Unless they have an older version of the PDF or something, I don't know. That might be it. Maybe if somebody can type it in. Oh, I see it here. Oh, okay. Well, mine has it. Weird. Okay, so who Allah who should be easy for everybody? That would be hint. Independent pronoun is usually followed by an is, so he is Allah, right? So that's that's straightforward. Wallahu min wara'ihim muhitun. So what's happening here is the word Allah is rafa, singular, masculine, and proper, right? And of course, min is a harf of jar. So this is jar because of it. This is a mudaf, and that's the mudaf ilay from behind them. And muhitun, don't worry about the other pro properties, it's common. Now I spelled this out because the word Allah definitely is in a mudaf. So that's gone. Because I'm going to go through the five fragments. It's not a mudaf, not possible. It's not a harf of jar, harf of nasab, or pointer situation. That's not possible. It's not noun adjective, because even if you were going to argue this is an adjective, it's common. And that's proper, right? Which means there's no connection based on the five fragments. There's no chain. Everything else, even though there's another break in chain here, it doesn't matter. Once you find one break, it's good enough. Allah is. Allah is. And then the rest of the sentence. Okay? Allah has them encircled from, be from behind them. Allah has them encircled from behind them. Wallahu min wara'ihim muhitun. Anything else? Yes. In the ayah that uh, says Isa ibn Maryam, when we translate it, why do we where uh, what's the relationship between Isa and Ibn? Uh it's called a badal. We haven't studied that yet. So um it's uh, or it could be out of bayan too. Um, again, a concept we haven't studied yet. So if I say, "Hey, your brother, the teacher," right? So what I'm saying is, um, or I said, I, "Hey, I met the teacher, your brother," right? If I said that, then it's like I met the teacher, which is correct, and I met your brother, which is correct. But they're kind of interchangeable, um, and that's what's called a badal. And then, inshallah, later uh, we'll see some of those concepts come to fruit. It's not a concept I've taught yet. They're called the tawabi' followers. And inshallah, there's a pretty long chapter on them. It's coming. Okay. Inna al insana lafi khus. How can we have harf of jar lam on harf of jar fi? The lam, you're right, you can't. You can't have. Inna al insana lafi khus has the word lafi. And I already told you, a harf of jar can't be on a harf of jar. You're absolutely 1 million percent correct. You know what that means? That means the la must not be a harf of jar. This must be some other kind of la, which it is. It's the lam of emphasis, which is not a harf of jar. It can go anywhere. It always pronounces la. So it means truly. So if fi means in, lafi means truly in. And if an means from, an means from, then la'an means truly from. And if ala means on, then la ala means truly on. And if ila means to, then la ila means truly to. Like Allah says about the Prophet ﷺ, wa innaka la ala khuluqin azim. No doubt, you truly are committed to a great character. So la ala. Okay. Alam can go on anything. It can go on a harf of jar. It can go on an ism. It can go on a fi'il. It can hang out anywhere it wants to. Why don't we look at uh, special mudafs as harfs? We don't look at special mudafs as harf like tahta because first of all they they fall under the category of more more importantly they have status so min makes it tahti 
the moment something has raf on a subarjar status, it has to be grammatically considered an ism. So that's why. And a harf of jar couldn't beat up on a harf. A harf of jar can only impact an ism. That's why it's an ism. Last one. Okay, since this is the last one, um, Fauzi is asking, uh, can you walk us through the meaning of Barakallahu li wa lakum? Not yet. That, uh, it's, it's, it involves fi'l. So when we do fi'l tomorrow, maybe I can do that. Yeah, I can do that tomorrow once we review the past tense, inshallah. But not today. I want to do it when it sticks in your head. All right. Zakumullah khairan, everybody. Again, bring new energy tomorrow. Give me all the past tenses. Page 33. And just for your own practice, read page 34. The transcript, I believe it was day 7 transcript. Uh, notes from day 7. Read those. Inshallah. Zakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And uh, Jawad, I'll send you the, the voice note, yeah? Yep. Okay.